Bro, what's wrong with your eyes? So this so this is black and blue now. Yeah. Because did I I told you was this was this nasty on the last podcast? It was nasty, but not like disgustingly nasty. Okay, we're at 20 seconds. You can curse now. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um so it went from it it originally started in this eye. And it was like a little infected. And I I remember I picked it and it yeah. like bust out. And then this eye got extremely infected. And right. then this eye was healing. And they put me on clindamycin and drops. And it healed up 90%. It still was a little swollen. And then all of a sudden, it went to this eye. Well, this how, eye how, how's this eye? This eye's like 10%, like still 10, 15%, not, not okay. okay. But then this one started to get aggravating, and then this one blew up again. Then they put me on doxycycline. That um, I just finished that today. That didn't clear it up. Then they gave me an ointment that I had to put in my eyes, and then I it literally I had to do it at night, and I couldn't see because it was like literally oint, imagine ointment, like yeah. ointment, like that for your like for your hands. Yeah, putting that in my eye. That didn't work, so I called up the other day. Uh, when was it two days ago on Monday? And I go, listen, I leave for Italy a week from Thursday. I said, I cannot be in Italy with these fucking eye problems. Like okay. I just can not do they it. They need to be, they need to be a quick clear. Yeah. Can you imagine people like coming up to me to take pictures at the seminar and would be like, mm -hmm. like, uh, you got to like, is that the new, is that the new COVID? Like what the fuck? Um, oh, God. So, so then I go to the, to the, to the eye doctor, I think it's optometrist or ophthalmologist. I think I think yeah, they're, they're, I think, they're yeah. similar. Um, and she's like, okay. She goes, we can either try another another eye drop, and then you can come back in the, in two weeks. And I was like, I'll be in Italy. Like, or she goes, or we can inject it with a steroid. And I was like, Ooh. I was like, where? She's like, here. I was like, I didn't even think. You I motherfucker. Like, I was like, I didn't even know it's a thing. So she takes an insulin needle. And she's like, it's okay. She's like, it's only 0 0.01. And I'm in my head, I'm like, yeah, I, lady, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're putting air into my eyelid. It's still a needle going in. So it's like, good. I had hurt. to sit there and like, look up. She's like, look up. And I'm like, looking up. And all I see is the fucking needle go in. And then she's like, all right, it's going to take about 30 seconds because I can't do it fast. I can do it slow. And she's just 0 0.01 on an insulin syringe is about Are you going to close your eye? No, you can't because you can't move your eyelid. So I'm like this. I would have lost. 30, like, uh, I, I got I tears, tears running down my eyes. I'm sweating because she's got a needle in my eye. I'm like, this sucks. And I walk out and I get to my car and I look in the mirror and I have blood. I did I send you the picture? Yeah. I'm like, why did they let me walk out like that? They let me Literally, walk out with blood all over my face. They, like, they didn't help you or nothing. They were like, all right, good to go. No, absolutely not. That's um, but, uh, you have the worst luck in the world, bro. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Literally every, every day you text me with something new. <laughs> well, so and he, I this this guy was was blowing me up about go to uh he was like, "Yeah, I'm going to come fucking he's like got this car dealership, he's going to do all this stuff, yada yada yada." And then uh I'm I'm going to text him again now. He's supposed to come here tomorrow. And like detail all my cars, and, and he, like I was gonna have buddies come by and, and bring their cars and get them detailed. The guys didn't even text me back. I'm just like people are just fucking pieces of shit. It's unbelievable. Oh, wow. Um, but furthermore, why do you look like you're still in prep? I, I got some guest poses, you know. Is that is that the real reason? Because you, were, I also saw you slamming down fucking eighty five burgers in Cheesecake Factory. Was, did you go? Did you go? Did you go restaurant hopping? Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. So well, so Maria gets a little upset that we go to the Cheesecake Factory every time I want to. We want to go out to eat. So she she's all about the Shake Shack. So I said, okay, let's go to Shake Shack, and then we'll go to Cheesecake Factory. You know, for dessert. So. That was the compromise. So I and I don't mind Shake Shack. I love Shake Shack. So we chip, we went to Shake Shack and literally across the street was Cheesecake Factory. So it was it was it was perfect. 
But the question is, did either one of you get dessert at Shake Shack before getting dessert at Cheesecake? No, we, we went to the Cheesecake. Oh, you did? You got all your dessert so at Cheesecake? this was the plan, right? Because obviously Cheesecake Factory, you know, is busy as shit. So yeah. we were like, okay, if there's a wait, we're going to go to this other place we wanted to try. But look, there was no wait. Look, it was a Wednesday, right? Or Tuesday, whatever. So we just got in perfectly fine. We sat down. We ordered a red velvet cheesecake and a strawberry shortcake. And she had maybe one of the, the biscuit things. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. I ate all the rest. <laughs> she had one bite of the, like the red velvet cheesecake and I ate all the rest. Oh my God. Did you take some insulin after that? I should have, but no. <laughs> well, see, look, here's the thing, right? Like the way my diet is, I I, I go down, right? So, so you start Monday high and then progressively go down? Pretty much. So as like, say, when I cheat again, my weight will maybe be what I was the day before, the morning of I had, you know, that big cheat or like a pound up. Hmm. So, so I come back down, which means I'm not accumulating any body fat, really. Yeah. And I, I actually like that, to be honest. So, so I've never heard of that. So give me, because I, I, if I've never but, heard of something me, like. Let me, let me, let me make no mistake here. My food's not low by any means. Yeah, when My you body, say comes. I just, you, I just burn it. So when you say comes down, like, does he just like bring the fat down or like, like depending upon the training sessions, bring the food down or just like right, because no, I have no, a week no. so schedule? I, no, no. I have a lot of fat and carbs. Every meal. Fat, yeah. carbs, fat, carbs, fat, carbs. Off days, carbs come down a little bit. Um, and on leg days is when we go really, really high on carbs. Okay. And then I have the cheat meal um, toward the end of the day. But be, but the diet, like for the rest of the week, it, it's a, it's enough food to for me to progress. Yeah. But it's not one of those diets where like you you you're eating enough you shouldn't cheat. I I wanted it structured to where it's enough to get me by and feel hungry but not put on a shit ton of weight because when I like to go out to eat, I like, I want to, I like to eat. I don't yeah. I'm a fat boy at heart. I want to eat. Yeah. And now that, you know, I, we go out you know, a little more often, I want to do it in a way where I stay in great shape. But when we go out to eat, I'm, I'm going to fucking eat. You're a fat kid. You bury. Yeah. So you guys about to eat twice a week? Once, twice. Give or take. Yeah. Is she dieting? Um, well, yeah, kind sure. of. She, is she is she doing a show? <laughs> if, if if she's keeping on the DL and she doesn't want anybody knowing her her next move, she then that that that's her prerogative. She she can do that. Yeah. Well, whatever she's doing, it shows because it look it looks as if she yeah. could pot potentially be getting in, in shape or something. Maybe just no, for sure. For sure. We'll, we'll call she's getting in shape for summer right now, and then we'll just yeah. we'll, whatever happens Stop. happens. Summer goals. Um, so what's, what's your weight? There are 272. That's crazy. And you're that lean. This has got to be the leanest 272. Cause you are lean at 272. I am. And like I, even, like I said, I don't want to drastically put on weight, get to 300, look like a water Buffalo, feel like shit. I, like I have a goal in mind. Like I don't, I'm, I'm 272 right now. So. I originally said I don't want to go above 280, 285. And if I can achieve that goal and look and put on the size that I need and stay in good shape, I think I'll have a phenomenal prep and, I'll, and be able to even grow even more with into the prep, you know? Yeah. What's your – would you have a, a – a, does Matt have you on a consistent cardio regimen? Are you kind of like – like I wake up every morning and do thirty minutes, no matter what. When I, whether it's the stairs, whether it's the treadmill, whether it's the bike. Um, yeah, I we, I'm it. doing 20, twenty minutes. I'm only, I'm not supposed to do it on leg days, but I just my routine. I just it's just like I'm I'm accustomed to getting up and going to do cardio. Um, but some days I don't do it just because I feel like sometimes cardio can be overtaxing. Um, and if I don't do it on like. Say I don't do cardio, like I'll still go to the gym in the morning and just do like a slow paced walk on the treadmill just to just stay moving. Yeah. But um other I mean, that's really it. Yeah. Yeah. I uh even there was I don't a... want to feel too fatigued, you know, and I feel like 
when you when your weight goes up, you're training hard, and then you're doing still somewhat intense cardio, the body's just gonna, you know. And it makes the the the, the cardio also helps the training sessions not tax you as much because like you're, there's guys in the gym train that like after a set they're fucking dying like can't oh, catch, like their cardio and they and then by the time it's their time to do a next set they're still trying to catch their breath. So, I don't. Um, but know, I do think taking days off of cardio is still very beneficial. Yeah, I, I take at least one to two days off. I'll, I'll usually take either Wednesday, which is like day off, or I'll take like Wednesday off or like a Saturday and a Sunday. Like yeah. I'll take one of those days off to, just to give my legs a break. But for the most part, it's, it's an everyday thing. Yeah. Um. So you've been promoting the app, the, the training app. Great app, bro. It's a how, great app. How is that? How is that new? Because I know you said you switch your training style. Because me and you haven't done a one-on-one in what? A couple weeks. Few weeks because we had the, the one with me, you, and Nick. Then we and then had we did with the, me, you, and Nick, oh, and Seth. Oh, yeah, so this has been like almost probably what three, three going on four weeks. Besides, three, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the app, listen. So, Jared, uh, Jared Feathers, who I, I guess he runs it with his partner Mike, dude. It's a you can structure the app any way you want, like even if you didn't do like the push pull legs, you like you structure how you do it. And basically what, what 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 you do is you set up the exercises, you set up the amount of sets you want to do with for that day. And then, you know, you you can log it. And when you're done like a certain exercise, it'll it'll ask you how your pump was, if you had any pain, um, did you push your limit? Like it, it structures how you did it. And when you complete that workout, it sets you up for what it thinks you need for the next workout. In terms of the volume, the intensity, you know, reps and reserve shit. Like, it's really, it's fucking good. Man. Now, how is that determined? Is it, is, is that info going to someone? Well, you have, you just have to tell the truth. You know? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it, it's a program that figures it out for you is what you're saying. Yeah. So does it determine the weight you should be doing and percentage of, of, of like, uh, your matches? Well, so of- it, yeah, for example, like, say... I don't know. Um, you were doing leg press. Okay. You did 500 for 12 reps. Okay. And then you did another set for 500. And, you know, you say you hit 10 reps, you know, and then next week it might say you hit 12 that following week, but next week it might say 13 or 14 reps and you have to hit that. Okay. So this is kind of like a, a beat a log book type of thing. Yeah. But I okay. like it. Sit by because I it's the lazy route where I don't have to write anything. <laughs> yeah, so is, it just, a, is it a pain in the ass for it to be on the phone or no? It's kind of easy. No, because the app's right there. You kind of say you whatever number you hit, you just boop, you type it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I, back when I was in college, I started using. I mean, I have them all over the place, but I got these these composition books. Yeah, I I, I keep every fucking I, all every contest for, I've ever done. I have a book for every single show. It's got my yeah. uh, meals in it, the times I worked out, my uh, my training uh, log, what I did, my cycles, my supplement regimen, my cardio regimen. Like those books are probably worth yeah. fucking money. And well, also, what's cool is you can leave notes. Where, like, say for a certain exercise you did, you know, a rest pause set, you can write the numbers in which you did that, um, or. You know, say for example, you know, you you obviously this is a type of thing where you want to stay at one gym, work on your certain equipment, right? Yeah. So say for example, you're traveling and you, you're on a different machine, you would just you could type in the notes, use a different Smith or use a different flat press for this uh yeah. day, and it programs it. So I, I I think it's awesome. Does it do you have the ability on that app to to print it out? I'm I'm sure you can. I never yeah, right? tried. I'm just saying, a lot of people might want to like print it out. I, I, I always, I always, I'm like, what happens if I, you know, the the, the app is gone or I, I lose it? <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, I, I still have the old school mentality. I don't know why. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask Jared. I'll ask Jared. Because that'd be something that that uh, would be because I, I don't, I, I was logging stuff in, in a book um, this past year, and I was, I was doing it because I was, I'm writing up a, a, a training log yeah. for clients and. uh it, it is a pain in the ass. Fucking every goddamn set, stopping, writing down, fucking 
X amount of weight times X amount of reps, or if you did like an intensifier or so, so it, so this isn't like, uh, it's not really a trainer because you're telling it how you want to train. It's just um, taking your training method and itemizing it in a way where it feels that it best suits your body. Or your yeah, body. right. For me. It, it, it's funny. I was actually just talking to Maria about this earlier. Everyone says, like, my legs are my weak point, right? I connect probably the best with my legs. So I never have to do a, a ton of volume yeah. because I like I did legs yesterday. I did one set for, with four different exercises, four sets total. My legs are trashed. Really? Like fucking trashed. Really? The, yeah, I'm sore as fuck, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I just know how to connect. So in my yeah. mind, you know, when people say, oh, your legs are small, it's like, well, maybe I'm just doing too much. Yeah. You know, everyone structured it to like for me to, oh, well, you need to do legs twice a week. It's like if I'm getting that sore and connecting so well with just that, I don't I don't need it. I don't think I need another like. Well, we were talking about it the other day. You're an anomaly in other ways. There's a lot of things you actually don't fucking need that a lot of other other bodybuilders. I, I think need. what happens for me is when I do cardio, I think I go too hard as well. Yeah. Like I'm because we're the same. We go if we're, that's it. We're cranking. Going, yeah, we're cranking. And I think, you know, when you get in a calorie deficit for so long, you're cranking the cardio is hard. Yeah. The legs are gonna go. It's the only yes. body part that's gonna go. Yeah. And I think with training legs and connecting as well as I do on a frequent basis, yeah, on top of the hard cardio, the legs are gonna go when you're in a calorie deficit. Yeah. It's just I I love the stairs and I would and I would do that too. But Aceto, there would Aceto would be like, you need to back it off a little bit and stuff. Yeah. He's like, you're 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 starting to flatten out too much, you know. So like even now, I do more steady state. He was obviously fucking being retired. I'm a lot smaller, but like I don't need to burn anymore because I only eat four meals a day and they're not super big. So like yeah. for me to go to fucking go hit and stuff, but. I do like incorporating like different like jump rope and shit. So like I do all different kinds of sure. shit in the morning sometimes to, 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 to switch it up. But uh, I think the stairs are a go-to. I don't think the stairs, like you said, like people say, well, you might disagree, but some people will be like, well, deadlifting gives you a wide waist, right? I, I never understood how deadlifting give you a wide waist. Maybe some people can say it, it did. I, I never... I deadlifted for a very long time, never got a wide waist from it. Um, but I, I, I guess that could go for other things too. But for you, I mean, we were talking the other day uh, about, you know, just bodybuilding in general. And, and you're right. Like if you are, are genetic, genetically superior in so many ways, then you might not need as much time in the gym as somebody else did. Like Sean Roden when he was still here, he like, it was crazy. Cause like he, in the off season, he had never trained. I know. Like, he, he trained, but he didn't train. Like it didn't make sense. Like he'd come to the gym and like do some stuff here and like, like do some lifts over there. And like, do, but like there was very few times where I saw Sean on like an all out regimen in the off season. But for some reason, like when it became time for pre-contest, it was like his body just transformed. It was almost like he knew his body didn't need to get destroyed in the off season because he knew what it was capable of when it came time to pre-contest. That's kind of like a Kevin LeBron thing, you know? Um, but I, see, and I, I, no one does it, right? But I also agree with that. Not to the extent that Sean and Kevin LeBron did, but... I don't think anybody should destroy their body in the off season to get ready for a prep to destroy it even more. Yeah. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. Did you, but you know? do you, did you ever, do you take time off like from the gym? No, I can't. I, I, it's, it's like, it's part of my day, you know, I just, yeah. But I do believe like you can go in there and go, you know, half of what you do in a prep and still get good workouts. Yeah. 
And just so, it just allows like more, more of a pump. Just go for the pump. Do you do that now? I I personally believe, and this is just me. It, I think no matter how hard you train, whether it's you know the the low volume, the high volume, to failure, reps and reserve, you should always have some sort of a pump. If I don't have a pump, there I, I there's something wrong. Yeah, I'm not doing something right. Like even with with the training now, I it's, it's funny. I, uh, Maria even noticed yesterday, my legs have never been so pumped like this in my entire life. Is that why you posted them up? <laughs> oh yeah, the, it hurt, bro. Like it really, it actually hurt. Let's see if I can let's do this, honey. I haven't had a pump like that hurt that bad before in a long time. Let's go to here. Hey. Is it this one right here? Is it, wait, is it this yeah. one? Well, show, you show, show the pick. Do the pick. This this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's now. Yeah. And then look, go over to the video. This was the craziest. No, no, no. The other way. Other way. Oh, sorry. That's crazy, dude. One more. This machine is absolutely fire, bro. It looks like you can sit all the way back on your heels and not worry about falling over. No, I went ass to grass on this. And I literally only have two plates on this machine. What? What? Who makes that? This is that new tech shit. Is that the stuff I'm seeing at Bev's gym? I guess. Is that the stuff that, that Steve keeps posting so. about? So they just, they're, they're, the gym's not open yet, but he let me come in, uh, me and Maria come in and train. The, dude, the machine, the, the way they are, bro, I, I feel nothing in the joints at all, and it hits the muscle so hard. And where was this? This is Vegas. Where? where? I, what, what? This is a new gym? Yeah, it's not open yet. What's the name of it? Torture Room. Oh, so he's oh, torture gym. I'm sorry, torture gym. Is that the same guy that that's not the masseuse guy, is it? No, no, no. This is this is like totally different people. I didn't even I I I I uh I wasn't sure what this was when you posted because I never see I, I thought maybe you might have been on the road or like it was like a, a video from when you traveled or something because I was like I, I didn't know where this was. Oh no, no, no. This is this was yesterday. <laughs> that's crazy. That's the, probably not, this is probably my favorite machine I've used for legs so far. But this is just insane. I mean, dude, you're paper thin still, Nick. I know it's awesome. Only do only on that TRT dose. That's cool. Look at, look at that. I think we all squint when we look at our legs for no reason because I do that too and I don't have a problem seeing. I know it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a bodybuilding thing. But that's crazy, dude. I mean, you 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 just you look fucking absolutely wild. I mean, these fucking pictures just blow my mind. It's crazy. These I just saw you uh you did some guest posing with uh, the guy Kyle. That was awesome, bro. He uh. I, he came up to me and um, where, where the fuck uh, at the Arnold and uh, he was with, uh, I, I don't know who the guy he was with. Um, he was always with uh, a gentleman. Do you know who I'm talking about? Like an older guy? It's probably his dad. Uh, it, I didn't think it was his dad, but that's a stepdad. Oh, it's a stepdad. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, yeah. So, they came up to me and he was saying that, you know, Kyle wanted to, to say hi and take a picture. I was like, absolutely. And, um, man, his physique was, is insane. Like, and, and just the passion oh. that, that he has for bodybuilding. The kid, um, the kid's heart is the biggest heart I've ever seen. It, it's awesome, man. And it's awesome to see. And, and it's just awesome to see that, uh, you know, the, the love that the, the NPC and, and everybody gives them because, um, I think we need kind of more of that shit uh, around. Agree. Days, I know? certainly agree. Um, 
you know, so shout out to and who who show that was uh whose Dorian. show was that? That was Dorian's show. Dorian Dorian and Noah's, yeah, Mariah's. Um, how, was that did they put on a, a good show or? Yeah, bro, their first one. I mean, they kind of promoted it uh, like late, so there wasn't like a, a a shit ton of competitors. Yeah, but the show was was ran awesome though. Like the production was great. Yeah, it looked like, and they had a lot of uh, uh pretty top notch guest poses. I mean, they had you, that Quentin, that Antoine, which right, looks um, they, how big Antoine. I mean, I don't think people realize how big Antoine is in person. He's big. He's got big legs. He, yeah, that's what I mean. He's big. His legs are huge in person. His legs are yes. Um, who else was there? Um, then they had the other uh, pro, Robin. Robin, 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 Robin. Yeah, he's um, not really well, well known yet. How's he look? Looks good. He's doing, I, I think, uh, Toronto. Well, let's wait, 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 wait. Holy shit, we we just skipped over a huge, huge thing. <laughs> that was your first fucking time out of it. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah got you, bitch. Time out of the country, baby how was uh was it was it like talk to me about like you're you're like going through cut like <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so hold on this is great my fucking first of all my air's blowing on me i'm freezing my balls off it was 80 fucking five degrees here today okay Bro. i will this Vegas weather has been wonderful. Yeah, because it's dry. I love it. You're such a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, tell me about your experience about going through customs, because I'm going to say this. I have traveled. I leave for Italy ne uh, a week from tomorrow, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to Italy. Uh, I'll, I'll, just a side note. So I had an opportunity to do two seminars over in Italy. Uh, so I leave on the 20th. I get there on the 21st. I'm there for 10 days. So uh, I'm gone from the 20th until the 30th. And uh, I have two seminars, one on the 22nd, one on the 29th. And I, I was going by myself. And I said, you know what? My grandparents, you know, my, my whole family's from Italy. My grandparents used to go to uh, Italy every year. That's where they're from. Uh, my parents have never been. So for Christmas, I paid for their flight. So my parents are coming with me. I booked their fucking flight, their hotel, their everything. Awesome, so uh, they're coming with me to Italy. So that's going to be a good time because I, I live by myself. Um, you know, I got a sister with three kids, a brother with two kids. Um, I'm kind of like the lone soldier. So I don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my parents. So that's going to be really nice for me to be in Italy and like for them to kind of have their their, their time and, and to kind of live like a little bit of their dream being Italy doing their yeah, thing. So that'll be really cool. But the reason why I'm saying this is because I remember even now, right, going through customs, even if you got nothing on you, you're, it's like you get I, I, you get a little, like when you go up and you got to go through customs, even like I'm like, I have no, no this on me, no this on me. Like you still get that sense like, are they going to stop me? So yeah. I would always go through customs and like, a fucking big heavy hoodie and like fucking pants and they want my calves to be seen and it like it could be 80 degrees outside and i'd be sitting there with sweat fucking sweat tripping down. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but people would say to me like people that did they'd be like yo like how much you bench and i'd be like i think i'm in a hoodie they're like i could see through the hoodie i'm like okay so it's like you you clearly aren't gonna walk in front of anybody and not no. anybody's gonna like not see what's underneath the hoodie so like what was your mindset going through customs because i know how it is and like was there any conversation did you say like did you have to fill out the custom form did they ask why you were yeah. here like did you say the wrong thing well, yeah, like, they were like so first of all i got nervous because like i i have i i packed like you know my vitamins like my my diet pills, right? You know, I'm like, fuck, they're probably gonna take them. But luckily, going through, they didn't need my bag didn't get touched at all, right? So I was happy. It was going through customs from uh, you know Vegas, you know, to Canada was extremely easy. When I landed, same thing, easy. They were like, why are you here? I'm like visiting friends. They're like, enjoy your stay. <laughs> so honestly, I don't have like a crazy story. Because it was pretty easy, no nothing, nothing happened. I was 
it was like five a lot simpler than what I had in my mind. I was waiting to get strip searched. I was waiting for them to check and demolish oh, that'll, my that'll, food that'll food. That'll happen. It'll happen. It'll absolutely happen. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Do you know I, I lost? I've been fighting for it back. I don't know if you applied for it. Did you apply for TSA pre-check, global entry, like any of that? Okay, so it's clear. No, nothing. Okay. So I had a thing called global entry, which was when I landed in other countries, instead of waiting on that fucking ridiculous line. Oh, yeah, it's long. <laughs> there was a separate line for global entry. You, you paid for it. And what it was is they do background check on you and they do all this stuff. Yeah. And it, pro it pretty much says that, like, you have been checked thoroughly and you don't have any criminal history. You don't have any felons. You've never been arrested and yada, yada, yada. So two years ago, I go to apply for it again because it was up after you get it for a five year term. And after that, it, you got to reapply and it was gone. And I reapplied and then I got a fucking denial letter. And I was like, what the fuck? So it said wrong date of birth. And I was like, okay, I'm not fucking that smart, but I'm not also that dumb. So I called and they were like, no, no, it's not because of your date of birth. And I'm like, okay. And the lady goes, have you ever been stopped in customs? And I was like, no. I go, actually, believe it or not, no. <laughs> and she goes, have you, did you ever get caught bringing anything back? And I go, yes. I go, one time coming back from Dubai, I was at the baggage check with my cooler and the dog sniffed out protein balls. And the lady looked in my bag, took them, put a black check on my ticket and said, make sure that doesn't happen again because you can get in trouble for bringing food back from another country. And I said, noted. I go, that was my only, and she goes, that was it. So supposedly, if you get a one-time fucking um, I think it's called like an, uh, it's like an ecologic, uh, like something to do with like bringing back food or like any yeah. sort of plant. Like it's like a one and done. So apparently like you can't ever get global entry again. But the last time I was fucking at Newark, I talked to somebody from global entry for 10 minutes in person. The guy was super fucking cool. I was acted like he was a bodybuilding fan. Gave me a number to call. Probably get home the next day. Call that number. It was like, yeah, this number doesn't even exist. So that sucks. Whoa. So I can't. I don't even have any recourse to get that. But if you are going to be traveling a lot, I suggest. I don't know what what airline you fly with or whatever, but definitely looking into doing that because you aren't going to like sitting in those lines. And a lot of those things with like TSA pre-check, you don't have to take your shoes off. If you don't have to take like a coat off if you're going through, like there's a lot of things that they allow slide because it's a it's a background check type of thing. So oh, anybody gosh. that travels, um, definitely, uh, you know, uh, look into that. And also anybody on here that is in Italy, drop a like and a comment down below because I will be. I'll actually tell you guys exactly where I'm going to be. I'm, I'm going to shout myself out so make you can fucking wait. Give myself some fucking. Give yourself some clout. Yeah, so, okay. We are going to be... At my gym in Rubiera, Rubiera Regimilia on April 22nd is where the seminar is. My, it's called My Gym, yeah. It's, the name of the gym is called My Gym in I Rubiera Regimilia on April 22nd. And then on April 29th, uh, me and the guy Alessandro Savi will be in Body Lab 1.0 in this is Kaladi, Tuscany. So, and that's on April 29th. So, uh, reason why I'm asking anybody, anybody out there from Italy that watches this podcast, watches any of the podcasts that I'm on, reach out to me. Or if, if it's easier, please email me at quadro training at gmail.com because. From the 22nd until the 29th, I don't have anything to do in Italy. So I have a full seven days in Italy where I don't have any seminars, anything to do. 
So I just have time to spend with my family or my parents. Okay. And I want to, I want to do some stuff. So I want to do some cool shit. So um, it's my second time being in Italy. The first time I was in Italy, I was at like a kind of sectioned off part of Italy, San Marino, um, which is people will say that's not really Italy, but I, I want to do some cool shit. So comment below, or if, if it's easier, just email me um, places to go, things to do, uh, restaurants to eat. You know, I'm, I, I want to see, uh, you know, my, my roots. So definitely let me know. But Nick, if that was a breeze, there's going to come a point where you're going to come go through a fucking uh, a, a customs that's like like an India customs or a customs in the Philippines. And I'm not going to say who it was, but one of our very close mutual friends. Almost I didn't know this and I don't know if the law changed and I'm sure somebody in the comment section is going to fucking say I'm wrong. I'm right. It changed or whatever. But I, I know for a fact this is what it was. Do you know back in 2019, I competed at my, that was the last show I won there. And I reached out to a, a friend uh, of mine at the time. And I was like, hey, bro, is there any place I get weed over here? So I'm like by myself. I need to smoke and fucking relax. And he was like, yeah, dude, it's fucking easy. I was like, okay. <laughs> so he goes, he grabs me weed, he brings it back to the fucking, to the hotel. He was a, it was a, a guy actually I competed with. He wasn't competing at that show, but he was a 212 competitor. And he brings it back and, and we're, we're talking for a while, whatever. And I'm like, dude, I said, how I go, do I have to like be careful when I smoke this outside? He was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, uh, when I go outside to smoke, I was like, I'm not smoking in my hotel room. Like when I'm outside, I said, if, if I, if there's cops, like I got to watch. Right. He's like, no. I was like, what? He goes, dude, weed's legal in Canada. I said, what? I said, dude, I said, and this is where our mutual friend comes in. I said, I had a mutual friend that was stopped in customs in Canada and almost got arrested because he had CBD on him. And I was like, bro, Man, how is it? I was like, how is weed legal in Canada when the CBD is illegal? I said, I remember him calling me and telling me he almost got in big trouble for having CBD on him. And uh, he goes, CBD is illegal because of the benefits pharmaceutically they don't allow it to be like sold anywhere but the pharmacies. But the THC product is fucking is you can do whatever you want with it, which is for us is polar is polar opposite of what it was in the states because that's it was never like that, right? Yeah. It was always you. Uh, were you always into it, it, like smoked? Speaking of weed, when I was younger. Um, yeah, I smoked a lot of weed daily and then I smoked, I smoked it more toward like bedtime. I used it for bedtime. Yeah. And now I really don't. You got roasted at that live podcast we did. Do you remember? That was the most roasted I've ever seen you in my, like, in a, I, I've seen you like, you know, like a little high a few times at uh, that bro oh. chat live. You were, I, I don't know what was in that pen, but you went from like. Something this? serious, guy. Something serious. I, it was almost like I, I don't. I don't think I ever told you, but <laughs> at one point I thought you were gonna have like a like a panic attack because I thought you were gonna like go like to another no. place because I, I was like you were you were, you were just like this. I was just chill, bro. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck, Nick's fucking out of it." I was like, "Jesus Christ!" That was that was the strongest I've yeah. Really, that was one of the worst. Was it, oh, yeah. was it, was it worse? Cause there was people there. Probably, but just like how I got, like it was, I was like, Oh yeah. shit. I'm not at all. Um, and your, your parents, yeah, your parents were at that. I remember your mom and dad were sitting by yeah, my parents yeah, going, they what... were fucking laughing and making fun of us. Yeah. Um, how is now you bounced around and, and I, don't, I don't mean that in a, in a negative connotation whatsoever. <laughs> um, Thanks. you, you, you've bounced around from since you left Jersey, you went, you were in one part of Florida, then another part of Florida. Right. And then you w went to Vegas. Yeah. Um, how is, cause you're, you're like me, you are a family guy through and through, right? Yeah. How is it not being with your family? Like, cause your brother's currently still in Florida, correct? Yeah. Mom and dad's still in Jer South Jersey. Yep. And that's it. Yep. So, because I've been debating for a very long time. I got this fucking beautiful house, beautiful lot of land. 
but I'm kind of like, what am I doing? You know, so I've been looking at houses in Texas. I had a real estate agent here, took a lot of pictures, drawn pictures, you know, moved a lot, all my furniture around, made it look nice because they were taking pictures for the, uh, for like to put it to listing up. How is it? And maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's hard asking you because you live with Maria, but how is it being away from your family? Because I'm trying to think like, okay, if I up and leave. And okay, I actually no, I, I can, because I've lived alone for a little while. Oh, you did. That's true. You're right. You're right. Um, it's it's hard, but you would you adjust, you know. Yeah. When I first moved out of my parents' house into Florida, that was probably that was really hard because I haven't been on my own at all. Yeah. So you know that was homesick a lot, um, but over time it gets easier because I would Facetime my mom almost every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just you just kind of get used to it, and like you, honestly, bro, they're a plane right away. You know, if you yeah. really want to, if you want to go visit, you go to you know, hey, yeah, I'm gonna come visit for a weekend. You know, let's do something. So it's it's you you will feel some type of way, but again, you can always FaceTime her. Obviously, that's yeah. not the same, but it's something. And if you ever want to take a flight and go, say it, you can. Because when you were in Jersey. You there was because you you didn't did you always you did blah 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 <laughs> when fucking stumbled around fucking words because I I wanted to say two different things at the same time and they were both trying to come out when you were in Jersey did you ever live on your own or were you just always at your no, parents? Because I was always on my mom. That's what I thought. Okay, because um, yeah, I remember yeah. I remember you were you dated you know um, you know people in Jersey. I remember you being with them a lot, but I was like, no, I think you always lived at your your mom. Yeah, no, I always I always lived in my uh, parents' house. Always. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um. So, I'm just debating. Like, is that where do you want to go? go? Man, Texas, yeah. right? Yeah, dude, I love it. Like, Flex wants me to fucking come to Vegas. Like, I, want... I would love for you to come to Vegas. You would hate my. Do you hate fucking texting me? Yeah, but I know you you like to talk on the phone. So if you come to Vegas, we can talk in person now. <laughs> oh, so you're saying you wouldn't talk to me on the phone, but you'd have me over every day? Yeah, we could just hang up. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have a podcast anymore. We'd get the podcast and be like this. But yeah, so we just talked five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if I could do it, it, it listen, if I had the fucking money. If I stop buying all these goddamn cars, um, I, feel that. <laughs> I I would like to have a, a place in Jersey, a place in Texas, and maybe like another little. And they're both. Else. They're both. I mean, I know Texas is. They're both a lot cheaper than where you're at. That's for sure. So, my house appraised at five and a quarter when I got it, and I got my house for four eighty, and I put down one twenty. But twenty of that went to closing costs, so I finance three eighty. Yeah, and I, I probably owe about three fifteen, three thirty on this house. And the lady that was here was thinking I could get probably eight fifty for it. I 8, believe eight fifty. So, I believe it. um, you know, the problem I would have is that, which is crazy, because I look, I dude, I have a lot of shit. I know. <laughs> I do. Too. I have a lot of stuff. And I'm just like, I look around and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm like, I'm going to either try to sell a lot of the stuff okay. with the right. house. You know, like you guys want this couch, I'll leave it. You guys want this bed set, I'll leave it like, and I'll right. increase the price to this. And, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I've never, when I got, I sold the house one other time when I got divorced, but that was kind of like, you know, a whole new chapter. So I was like, yeah. whatever, get, take what you want. We'll get rid right. of everything else. It's like, you know, it was like scraps at the end. But um, yeah, I'm just, dude, I've been here for seven years, man. And uh, it'll be seven years. Well, uh, was it, is it seven years? So I moved in in October, October 31st on Halloween on 2016. So that makes it, what, seven years? Yep. So um i think i personally think you need a change bro i do i do because i feel like i've been stagnant and i've been in the same yeah. spot for a while and nothing's really changing and like i said I, I always want what's best for you so texas if you think that's yeah. your spot 
Go be go, man. Well, you know, you know why Texas is just like, bro. I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I well, love, it, fit, I love the fish. You. Yeah, dude. It just is. It it, it's more you. redneck, you know, and uh, which is crazy because I don't have to sell fucking, you know, I have to get rid of two of my vehicles, and I would only take my truck down. So, and then I have to fucking tr- try you, to get away you, to get. You want to take the other ones? The Porsche I get rid of, and the and the the BMW I I, I get rid of too. Yeah. Why? Why? Well, why? The because BMW? I would rather get rid of them and then go to Texas and just like and fucking get, get take the money from them and get something else, yeah. you know. Because yeah. you got to remember, in the South, like that's why I was shocked. Not shocked because I I would I would do it too, but for you it was different because I would be I was shocked that you got a truck in Vegas because it for me. I am more prone to drive a sports car or like something lower to the ground that's like like has suspension on it. Like whether it's uh like you have your well, you have the is it the vet? Yeah, I have the Corvette. Yeah, you have the vet. So I because down in, in Florida in uh Vegas, you guys don't have like the erosion of the roads. You guys don't have like the really a lot of snow. You don't have the plows that are fucking destroying the road. So I would get something like, dude. My my BMW, I drove it today driving in the fucking CVS, and the CVS I went into just dipped down like this and had that, like, metal fucking little grate in the middle. And I, it doesn't matter, but, like, my rim got a little scratched. But thankfully, I had the, the tire rim package, but it's like that little shit just is so annoying, which is why I, I love my truck. I could, drove, I could drive over a house. I know. You know? Um, no, but I actually love the truck. I'll be honest. You're, you're never... You might keep your like other cars or have like like yeah. an other like drive like a sports car or a daily driver driver like I do, but you'll probably never not have a vehicle like a truck where you're high up. Probably. Well, it's like I have all three sizes. I have the big truck, and then I have the X6, and then I have the Corvette that's slow as fuck. <laughs> Dude, so I got I got I got the the the, so I had the Ram Rebel. And then I had the B. I had so this is actually how I originally had the Ram Rebel, and then I had a BMW. Yeah. I, I told you about the. I remember the bad accident I was in back in 2011 where I almost died. Of course right? I do. So, no. no. What'd you say? She asked me if I'm flexing. He's flexing them titties. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had I had a 2011 BMW. Um. 328xi and i okay. thought it was i thought i was like i'm the fucking hush, right? i got a bmw back in the day i was like this is a fucking drip black and black and black bmw like black bmw with black tints i was like i'm the fucking man and uh bro i never drove it i really? sold i sold that car back to the dealership with seventy five thousand miles on it for eleven thousand dollars okay and then, so I had I had my Rebel, and then I had the M440. Then I got rid of the Rebel and got the TRX. And yeah, then I, I got the TRX, the M440, and then I was like, the M440 is a lease, because I didn't want to buy it, because I want to get something else after I turn that in. So I was like, I need an everyday driver. So then I got the Porsche, but the Porsche, like, I'll, I don't think I'll ever buy a used car again. And not because I, it was a bad experience, but because the little things that go wrong that are so fucking stupid and aggravating and they're just things that I can't do because the like I just like there's things that I know like I used to tune my own fucking Bronco but these cars are too technologically advanced and computer savvy to touch them um but I got to say man it the the it, the Porsche is it's like not so, it's like faster than like a normal car but when I get in it from driving the other cars, it's like my yeah. foot wants to go like through the fucking floorboard because it's like it, it can't go fast. It's a uh, I, I you didn't see the picture of it. It's a yeah. uh, a Porsche here. here. I'll uh, I saw. I think you put a picture of like the steering wheel or something. But yeah, no, I I didn't, bro, I didn't post it. Like like uh, I thought maybe I sent you a picture of it. Oh no, you, I I wasn't your oh, friend then. Shut the fuck. Up. What a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. Oh, okay, yeah. You like do you like it? Bro, I gotta say, man, 
it's if you saw so it's a, it was a this was the deal I got on it. It was Torchlight Motors in uh down in in, in it was a little south of Jersey. I think it was in uh it was a Parlin. Shit, it was a Torchlight Motors. I think like around like Woodbridge, like around that area. I can't I don't remember the exact town. The guy Jared Jeff who was awesome. He took care of me. Great guy. Um, so that was on the lot. That was a 2012. It had 75,000 miles on it. One, it had one owner and then went to the auction, clean Carfax, never been in an accident. And dude, if you open the doors, the fucking leather is mint. There's not a scratch on it. There's not a fucking uh, a tear on the leather. Like everything works on it. The backup camera works like the fucking radio works fine. Like I had to replace the mirror, so which meant I had to replace the whole fucking windshield because of the way the the, the wiring yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to replace that. I had to replace the. Uh, I, I kept putting windshield wiper fluid in it, and then it kept leaking. So I thought the windshield wiper container, the fluid was was had a hole in it. Turned out it was the line that went to the lights that sprayed on the lights. So I had to get that fixed, and then the alignment was off. But then I put tire and rims on it. Then I put tints on it. And so it's like, by the time you get set and done, I paid 21,000 cash plus the other work that gets done to it. Um, my buddy's friend owns a shop. You're better off just getting a new car at that point. Yeah. Joe knows a guy, Diogo. Um, he's got a, a, a crazy shop. I think it's called AMS. Um, I'm probably getting these fucking names wrong, but his, his shop did a great job and, and hooked up uh, my car. So yeah, I, I, I have, I have three vehicles. You saw the BMW, right? Yeah. I have the BMW, the truck and the Corvette. What BMW do you have? X6. That's fucking badass. That's my Phoebe. Where is is that with you? Yeah, they're all here now. Oh, they. So did you pay a uh, was like a like a like a car service company to like to bring them on a trailer? Yep. That's what I if I moved and what is that is is that pretty that's got to be a couple grand two grand three grand yeah I think I was like twenty five hundred for all of them for two of them yeah that's not bad. No. Also, oh, if I want to take my truck, that well, my truck's heavy as fuck, though. Um, you know what I really want, though? I really want. Um, fuck! Why am I drawing a blank? A Challenger again? Real? What? Oh, dude, get the fucking. Oh. I want the Demon, bro. Hold on. Oh, I was, I was gonna pull up the fucking the Hellcat. Well, I'll take a Hellcat too. Did you ever see I that? Would, I would one hundred percent trade my Corvette Corvette oh, in wow. for that. They're just my favorite cars. Nick, boy, yeah. are you sh look at that. Are you shitting me? Look at that, bro. Yes. Dude, look at this thing. Tell me that thing ain't badass. Or you know it's even more badasser. Badasser. <laughs> Where I can't go back. Not the fuck. I hate this shit. This one right here. Which one? Because then. We can be matching. Oops. What the fuck? What did it say? <laughs> it's in the shop? It's in the shop. Getting work his done. Page, his page is in the shop? Page is in the shop. Was it, was it that one that I clicked? No, that's a different one. Okay, let's see this one. That's badass too, though. That that dude, yeah, bro, where'd he go? Where'd he go, dude? Dude, dude, those cars are epic, bro. You, dude, I, if you're gonna get a Challenger, you gotta get a Hellcat. You, you got it. Do you do you ever drive like um? You never drove my truck, right? I've never driven the truck, no. Ah, dude. So you should have fucking came here when you were here the last time. Yeah. Hey, badass, bro. If you drove this, okay, I don't think you realize how fast I, I I've been in some fast cars, 
but the power of that engine it's got 702 horsepower that one actually might be i think it's a, it's the same engine but it might be a little faster because that's a lighter vehicle yeah. um, so that might be like a 3.4 0 to 60 but you would have so much fucking fun in that car uh, and we got i have so much road down here to just bro lay out but the only thing that sucks about it i don't know what the gas price is over in vegas but dude that's it's, it's not that bad you're talking on a good day eight miles to the gallon oh i know <laughs> it sucks right. it well because it was funny so I don't, I don't know if you saw the story but i i wanted to take the corvette out like a couple days ago and me and maria went to go go-karting and she whooped my ass which seriously yeah bro i got my ass beat <laughs> I was Probably because you're just so damn heavy. Bro. I, was, I was dead last. Everyone just passed me. I'm like, fuck this game. But yeah, after we left, I'm like, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the gas on this motherfucker. And I just, it was awesome. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you did something. Oh no, I was just, oh. I was in a zoom zoom mode. Zoom zoom. What? How? Zoom, uh, zoom. How? It, it, what? Do you have a picture of your car on your phone? Oh my! Oh, on my phone, my car. Yeah, or is it on your on your page at all? Uh, text no. me. Oh, you can't. You can't even text me a picture of it. I can't. I'm on you're the on, phone. You're on the phone. Um, which hold on, I'm gonna show because I don't think I I've seen it once. What is uh which which one do you have? Corvette. Yeah, let me pull it up. The the 2019. Um. Huh? I know, but oh, oh, I could do that. Well, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take you to the garage. Oh, yeah, you go. Whose idea was that? That was Maria's idea. Maria, fuck me, Maria, right? Love it, love it. Show it all. See, I, I can't. I do. I do our podcast from the 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 desktop, so I can't fucking get out of this room. So if I want to like make food and shit and and act like an asshole and then. Put my fucking phone down or and walk away. I can't. <laughs> I gotta find the light on right there. Here you go. Always move. That's fucking tits. You see it? Oh, but yeah. Go on the inside. Go in. Go inside it. The red interior, bro. Yeah, bro. That's fucking. That's fucking awesome. You gotta get the the front window. You gotta get it tinted, Nick. I know. That's fucking sick. That's dope, right? Actually, yeah, you know, hold on, go in a little. It, actually, those seats look a lot bigger than than uh. Bro, it's it's not it's, it's not, not as small as, as yeah. Those are they're the bucket seats, right? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then look, check this out, bro. Check this out. We got the sauna right here. Oh shit! Hold on, let me take a picture. <laughs> Send it to Lewis. Send it we got the Lewis. sauna. We just. We oh, just say, do it again. No, 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 no. Go back. Oh. So me and uh, so Nick, we we'll, we'll shout him out on the podcast. So we uh, we got connected. Well, what was what was the group? There was a group chat name. There it is. So we uh, we got connected, and uh, if you guys go, and I'll show you their Instagram real quick. <clears throat> it is medical saunas. I'll actually put up on here. And uh, Nick, which one did you get? So if you guys are interested, oh, in getting which any one did we get? The infrared one. That's the one that I got. Yep. Infrared sauna for two people. Yeah, it's the infrared sauna. It's just, it's two people. It's like the the second from the the biggest one. I guess. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I got the I got the 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 biggest. I got. Did you build yours yet? I got it. So it's ninety nine percent built. It just has to. I got to put like um all the. I, I didn't plug all the shit in. Like put the towel racks on. Um, but I will do that, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's my off day. So if you guys want, so th this place right here, medical saunas, um, m myself and Nick were, were connected with them and they ended up, uh, sending us both a sauna and Nick got, um, trying to find it on here. I don't know which one, Nick, I think he got the this medical sauna five. Medical sauna five. Well, here we could, we could also do this. We could all go here. Yeah, go to the We can show you guys what which one Nick got. So I believe it was that. So this is the one that I have. Yeah, right that's here. a big one. Yep. 
And you got, I got to move you away here. You, you went real big. So medical saunas. <laughs> so here we go. So you guys got this one right here, medical five? Yes, that's the one. Okay, yeah. So I got, oh no, I got medical you, seven. I got this one. You, you got the extra large. Yeah, boy. Come on, Michelle. Like a whole party. Because that one's the large. We got medium. I got this one. Medical six is the large. Yeah. This is extra large. Yeah. So, you guy, you're five. in your house by yourself. What the fuck are you gonna do with that big ass thing? I don't know, bro. It just fucking happened that way, you know. You're gonna you're gonna have some bitches over. <laughs> it happened that way. Party in the sauna. Hey, party in the sauna. <laughs> uh, you know what? This is why I was gonna get the one that you got, and then Lewis was like, honestly, he was like, they're not super big. He was like, so if you have the room, get the biggest one. And I was like, okay. It's not that bad. Like, me and her could definitely fit in there and be fine. Yeah. 100%. So, I mean, I, I might I might have went a little too big. But, um, no. you know, if you guys want. So, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout out. I don't know. You, you know what your code is? Code mutant. Yeah. So, I think my code is quadro. Uh, the easiest. I'm looking on the thing. No, my code's guy. <laughs> code guy. Or use code guy or mutant guys if you want one of these medical saunas. Um, obviously, uh, I haven't used it yet, but I have used a um, sauna before like this. A you got the red light sauna, right? The red light therapy one. Yeah. That's the one I got. So red light therapy is very, very good. It's got a lot of benefits from, which is why I got the biggest one uh, put in my basement because I want to get the most benefits from all them yummy, yummy red lights. So um, mm -hmm. go to uh, medicalsaunas.com. <laughs> Use promo code guy or mutant. Yummy, yummy red lights. And save yourself some moolah. <laughs> um, oh shit, I wanted to go, I wanted to segue into something we were talking about, and I totally fucking we were talking about cars, right? I don't know how yeah, to yes. um the challenges. Yeah, well, well, hold on. With your Corvette, the not see, I don't like feeling like I'm in a fishbowl when I when when I'm driving. Like I don't like not having tints on my fucking on my mirrors. It drives me on my windows. So I, I do want to put tints on it. Okay, you are. Yeah, because it'll change the whole look of the car. Yeah, it'll look more badass. A hundred percent, hundred. And you got to get so you just match the size. Cool is where I live. There's a tint shop right up the street, bro. You walk in and be like, you know who I am? No? Well, let me tell you a little something. I do that all the time. You remember I did the Cheesecake Factory and you punked me? Oh, my God. Dude, really we, punked the shit out so, of me. So we went now, obviously. It was it, like, well, that might have stirred up an appetite. <laughs> I, he did say that to me. <laughs> I'm like, fuck He said God. that to me. I know. So we go to Cheese. It was like, what, three years ago? It's like three years ago. It was, uh, no, it was out like last no. year. No, it was two years ago. It was two years ago. You did it. It was you guest posed, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was two years ago. And uh we go out to eat and, and Nick did it. Nick meant it in a funny way, but just okay. he when he said it, he well, said it. So, wait like an hour and a half. Said it so dead serious. And he goes, he walks up to the fucking thing, he goes, Excuse me, sir. Um, we've been waiting like a really long time. And uh, <laughs> like you said it was like 30 minutes, it's been 45. Like, what's going on? And he's like, sir, we're sorry, we're really busy. And he was like, yeah, but I'm really hungry. He's like, you don't, you don't know who I am, do you? And the guy's like, no, sir, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. And he goes, I'm, I'm Nick Walker. He's like, I'm, did you say, did you say, uh, what, what, what was your, what was the big prestigious thing at the time? Like, it was like all, all the things that you accomplished. It was like, what was the big one at that time? Because you were like, I'm, no, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you're like, you're like. Uh, he goes, I'm the honest class. I'm, I'm, I won the honor class this year. I'm not a classic champ. And he goes, yeah, Sir, sorry, I, I don't know what that means. And then he goes, I don't know what that is. And then you were like, Well, well, now you do. So we can can we get our fucking table? And then we waited, waited, and then a guy he made that fucking sideways comment. But have you ever been in a position where that one liner has actually done you justice and actually worked? Yeah. Because I have. That's why I want to yeah. know. Because in that situation... Actually, it, it happened last year when I guest posed in Pittsburgh and we went to the Cheesecake Factory after the Pittsburgh. It worked Stop right it. There. Again? Yeah. How did it work? Worked. Well, because they were like, it's going to be about a 45-minute wait. And I'm like, look. I said, look, we're really hungry. 
you know, I am Arnold Classic champ. I was top five with Olympia. You know, and this is my favorite place. And we're kind of in a rush. And the girl was like, just just give me one minute. I, she was like, go to the side. I said, all right, cool. I didn't say, I'm not doing that to the side. And she, <laughs> <laughs> two minutes later, she came back and was like, we have your seat. Just like that. Yep. So yeah, that stuff doesn't oh. happen with me. Oh. Oh. That was me. oh, she said that's bullshit. Maria, you got to get this guy out of his cheesecake factory, fucking uh, out of his quicksand, dude. Getting sick of it. Uh, look, you can't tell me my eye didn't look. You just got worse over this podcast. Now I got it. I don't think so. No, maybe a little puffier. Um, well, you will be happy to know that I'm trying to eat a little more and then try to not look so like flat, you know. Um, but it's not as easy as a balancing game as you think, but I, I am trying to look, it's hard because I, I feel like I look okay, but I want to look better, but I don't want to eat too much food because I don't want to fucking put all that stress on my organs at 41. So it's like very hard, but I am trying to fucking. What are you, are you eating four meals? I eat four, I the same four meals literally every day. I can tell you exactly food. what they're. Huh? How much carbs do you think you're eating? I, well, here, ready? Let's We can figure it out real quick. We do, in the morning, I do two whole eggs, four egg whites. I do 35 grams of cream of rice, 150 grams of berries. So that's maybe about 50 grams of carbs total. 50, 150 grams of, of mixed berries and 35 grams of carbs from cream. I use Pride Foods cream of rice, one scoop, 35 grams. Figure 50 grams of carbs. Yeah. Then, but I do that meal at 3.30 you know, before I go to the gym. And then I, in the gym, I do one medium-sized Gatorade and water when I when I train. That's 35 grams of carbs again. After I train, 50 grams away, 50 grams of Formula 19 from Blackstone Labs. So that's my carbs from there. The meal I had prior to coming on here was 50 grams of carbs from jasmine rice or sushi rice. I had six ounces of chicken, uh, mixed sautéed vegetables that I made like uh, – uh, mushrooms, onions, and green beans. And then before I go to bed, now this might sound weird, but I have to do this because if I don't, no, I do a shake. I'll do a shake or I'll do a, like turkey or chicken or something yeah. if I want. But I usually have three to four pieces of toast and I'll do some almond butter, or peanut butter. If I yeah. don't have the carbs yeah. before bed, dude, I will wake up three pounds lighter. Have you ever thought well, how we're, how much fat are you eating in a day? Two whole eggs, and then I do um, if well, I have okay. if, if I have bison or salmon, and then the uh, peanut butter or almond butter before bed. So it's not that much. No, but I try to do a, like before, the, before I go to bed, I'll do like three tablespoons of peanut, two three tablespoons of peanut butter, four slices okay. of toast, because that holds me through the night. Like I just weighed myself. Yeah before the podcast because I, I ate showered got ready and after i got out of the shower and i had already ate my third meal i was 195.4 so i'm like i know if i just went to bed i'd wake up i'd be 190 so it's a very hard but like dude i could get to 210 if i want like that but i don't want we'll to just be do like a slow increase every you know every week yeah. or so do you do cheat meals at all or not really so I, I've been like balancing them, right? I've been trying to figure out what is the best way for me to do it. Meaning, so what I'll do. I feel like you get away with like twice a week. So I, this past week, because I've been really buckling down on, on my diet and not like snacking in between or like yeah. you normally like, oh, if, you, if I want a piece of this, it doesn't matter. Like I'm almost acting like I'm in a prep mode, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not veering off the plan like even joe joe came over last week he came over once with um uh, mcdonald's he came over once with an italian hero um but joe. i didn't i didn't yeah i didn't have it i didn't have anything but what i tried to do this week because my weight was starting to plummet fast already but then it was last week and i had uh on saturday night I had a little a little cheat meal, which was like it was like a half of a of a hoagie, not even yeah. half. It was literally like maybe that big. And I had a not it was it wasn't full, but it was close to being full, a pint of Ben and Jerry's. That was it. Woke up the next morning, my weight was down. And I was like, okay. 
So that day mm-hmm. I had my normal meals. And then before, <laughs> before bed, this was last week, no lie. I had eight slices of pizza, two pint and Ben and Jerry's. And I went to bed. I gained eight pounds. You need to eat. You need to eat, bro. So it's like, but it's hard. But you, Nick, it's hard because I don't have that like pop. So it's like I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm not fat, but like I don't look like peeled in the stomach well, and like I, I got so. watery on the fucking love handles. And it's like okay. you have that mentality where like if I eat, I'm gonna look worse. <laughs> well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what the the like picture you posted in our group chat. You're pretty diced up, my friend. <laughs> the like. The leg, your your legs had it's still divots in them, bro. I know, I know. Your your leg was dry as fuck. No. And that's what doesn't. But that my legs are like that. My my back is peeled. Like my like my my um serratus is peeled. But like there's certain areas that just have like that like that that, that like that my love handles got that like j- like that little just like crap on them that I'm like yeah. hey, just. You know what it is. I'm re- I'm old and retired. Yeah, bro, you're getting you're getting all you're you're starting to get the old man skin now. Well, I'm not there yet. Easy, easy. <laughs> Maria, can you hit him for me? Old man skin, I'm forty fucking one. Throw me a life no, raft. <laughs> Wait, what? These fans are overprotective of Nick. Whose fans? Yours Mine. are overprotective of you. Of me? About what? Well, she's only saying that because we did the Q and A shit, and she got she got roasted. Yeah, she did. Yeah, when we did the the couple like Q and A, I had to I had to turn the comments off for like domestic abuse. Yeah, she she got roasted, bro. No way. Where we where, where can I watch that? On my YouTube. Oh God, was it that bad? Yeah. What were they saying? Wait, 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 wait what, why? Like the video wasn't bad, but like what people were saying. But what were they saying? Like, what could they say about Maria? Like, she's the nicest girl in the world. Uh, she's going to ruin your career. She's too controlling. She's crazy. She's trying to change who you are. Yeah. I'm like, how could she even draw these conclusions? Yeah, Nick. How dare you allow her to switch your cheat meals, you selfish <laughs> son of a bitch? How dare. Fuck me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. For, for those, for those that now she's taking your cheesecake factory away. Yeah, fuck her. Fucking horrible human. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've been around Nick. I've I've seen people he's dated and, and and been in relationships with, and Maria, in my opinion, takes the cake. She is one of the sweetest, nicest, kindest, prettiest girls you 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 can meet, and she's got every well intention for Nick that you could imagine. So if anybody thinks otherwise, y'all need to step back and get a reality check because Maria is, is, is in this so much for, for Nick and does a lot for him and puts him ahead of a lot of things in her life. So if anybody thinks otherwise, you guys can all suck a bag of dicks. Sure does. Yeah. Oh, suck all those bag of dicks. Hey. All, all of them. All of them. <laughs> You guys should have like a censored thing. Nah, bro. No, we just say how it is. Speaking of, uh, I don't know. Dude, <laughs> dude, it's like, do I want to touch on this topic? Uh, what, what's the topic? Maybe I can bring Maria into this because Maria is kind of like the, the sidebar conversation with us. She's like the one that's over because I don't, there's nobody here for me. Uh-oh. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it slowly because I, I, okay. I, I think we did a little bit with with I think we did we did with with Nick and and Look. Seth. So there's been a big not a big but there seems to be is Maria listening because I wanted to a yeah. a yeah. shift in the overcorrection of the society social norm of the 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 the, the L is it L G B Q T X is that right? Am I saying that right? The the community, the okay. lesbian, gay, trans, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, so. But what I'm saying is, is that you know, okay. you huh? she said you said X, you're gonna get shit for that. Well, is is it wasn't X? What can I don't I don't I don't I don't know the acronym. Oh, like it's shit. not. What is it? Say it again. L what? L G B D Q. T Q. T Q. I'm sorry. L G B T Q. I thought there was an X there at one point, though. 
Maybe there's a new one. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, they, this just this just this just proves everything. So okay, anyway. I, um, so I apparently all of a sudden. Um, it's, it was starting with the NHL a little bit about the guys not want the NHL not wanting allowing the teams to make a decision if they're you know could wear the the pride colors and 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 the, rain, the rainbow colors on their jerseys and they were saying no and then they were fucking um, then not banning it but they were kind of like just saying you know we're 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 not doing that we don't want it with we don't want anything to do with that and then you saw with Budweiser uh, Anheuser Busch now came out with a can that was. Um, has the Roy G bib, which is, you know, the, the colors of the rainbow. And it had a, a, a famous actor slash actress, a guy that now trans, um, transitioned into a woman. And I guess they're using her as kind of like the spoke model now for, for the Anheuser-Busch Bud Light, whatever. I, I don't look into a lot of this stuff. So yeah. um, I really don't like want to know. I, I, I don't really, I detach myself from the news for various reasons, but, um, what I do see, it seems to be more people now, more than ever, are being vocal about the dislike of the taste, tasteless acts of the agenda that's being pushed. And I think the problem for me, listen, if you want to fucking date a guy, date a guy. You want right. to fucking date a girl, date a girl. If right. you want to change your sex, that is your prerogative. You right. have the right to do that. However, okay, however, just the way I went about my life, okay, and, you know, being a pro bodybuilder and taking steroids, you when people ask me, well, what should I do for my first cycle? Do you want to know what I say to them? I can't make that decision for you. That's right. a decision that you have to make for you as a moral person, human being, and you have to be okay and make and have peace and make peace Except with those decisions and those results, right? Now, when I don't push what I do on anybody, if you are a fan of what I do or like it, thank you. If you're not and you have questions, I will answer. If you think what I do is completely fucking ridiculous and insane, that is also your opinion too. But however, I never lived my life based on anybody else's opinions. No, but no. I do have a problem with groups of people forcing agendas on everybody else. And I think that's where it was. It's like they touched the most American thing that there was. Nothing's more American than fucking Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light. having a exactly. What were the commercials? Do you remember the commercials when we were growing up, the Budweiser commercials? Yeah, bro. They were like the hardcore, like sexy girls in bikinis, or like rednecks yeah. drinking beer, or you had like the frogs, the Bud Weiser. <laughs> yes. Remember those? Like, and now they're just going like totally crazy. Like, how do you like, you know? Because I'm 41, and I, and I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and and, and I like, the school systems, and like, what is your? Because I don't have a like. People hear what I say sometimes, and they think I have a problem with with like, oh, that person or that person. No, I have a problem. I have a problem with vegans trying to tell carnivores that their way's better. It's like, dude, if you want to be a vegan, I, that's, I, I've dated girls that are vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian. That's completely fine. However. Don't tell, don't tell me I should do it. Do you don't, don't, don't fucking interfere with my life and, and, and my, my values. So like, what is your, like, you know, we don't really talk politics ever, you know, no matter what podcast we've ever been on it. We never really were politically, but I, I am, however, interested because this seems to be one of the things I saw today. Um, obviously, this is this is a, this is going to be this is a little more drastic, but it, it was to get the point across because if somebody said, if I can complain, if, if, if people can complain about a black lady on a, a pancake mix be talking about Aunt Jemima, then then we have the right to complain about a white girl slash guy on a Budweiser can if we don't like it. And I'm like, that's that's pretty valid. That's pretty valid. You know? Valid. So like what is your because I mean this is a topic that right now is hot. It's a very hot topic. Everybody's talking about the whole fucking the switch. Like what is your I mean you could say I, I really don't give a fuck either way, but I'm just con I'm wondering because you know I'm I'm pretty highly opinionated. Like, what's your take on 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 the whole just 
thing in general? Uh, listen, I, you're right. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I also don't think it, it, it should be publicized the way it is, to be honest. Like it's like you said, it's your right. You want you want to date a guy, you date a guy. You want to date a girl, you date a girl. You want to be a man that turns to a female or be a female. That's that's your that's your right. That's your that's your prerogative. I don't care. But it's just not something that we should be advertising all over the world. You're you know, back in the day, that shit was that's non-existent. You know you know what I mean. And now you got little kids growing up wondering, it, you know, if they're a boy or a girl. So it was hard, and, and and you're right. And I think, and the reason why I have a problem with it, if, if somebody's uncomfortable in their skin, and they want to change for to to in their mind better themselves, then that's, God that's, God bless them. God bless you. It. I want you to feel good about you. The problem, yeah, I however, I do have is that you know when you're promoting it to kids at like they're they're, they're like saying that like. Oh, uh, my kid wants to make a decision to be a girl at five. Like, what, what at five? Like, hold, let's back up a second. You don't even know what a penis is yet, Nick. Like, I, you're I don't. Gonna, you're gonna let like it's just it's too much. When I was growing up, every Sunday we went to CCD, and then we went. I to did that right did after. That. Now, I back then when I was a kid, and I didn't understand everything because I was a kid i was going to ccd and church and i did what every fucking kid did at that age which was what nick what i don't want to do this who the fuck oh wants yeah to, damn right i don't want to who do the that. fuck who no who wants to go to ccd on sunday who wants to sit in fucking I, church I tried. I tried before yeah. I went. <laughs> nobody wants to go but my point is this it wasn't until i was in high school and into my sophomore and junior and senior year that I then understood the reason why yeah. my parents wanted me to go to church because I un I finally gained the value and respect for it that I needed to that took time and my yeah. point is is that at a young age you can't give a kid the ability to make those decisions because their brain is not fully developed and understands the consequences and the rights and the wrongs and like the long term effects and to allow kids to throw that at kids' faces and confuse them. And we talk about mental illness and, and people having mental problems, but- I think that creates a lot of mental illness. <laughs> confusion, com because confusion, now- people, yes. And, and, and yeah. Well, yeah, it becomes an identity issue. Right? Yeah. Here. And we're wondering, and, you know, the, there, there was, there was um, studies done about like people that transition and suicide rate and it the effect the 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 rate is still just as high with the transition so it we're not really we're 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 not helping the cause we're kind of like playing into it and we're not helping anybody which which playing into it can make it worse yeah you know and i think there needs to be like like something needs to be done to help the people because it's it's not it's unfortunately it's not normal to just change your sex. It's not a normal thing. You know, there has to be something going on for somebody to feel that way. And maybe like, maybe, maybe it's treated the wrong way. Maybe, you know, I, I know there's, there's hermaphrodites that are born with, with both sexes and, you know, so you gotta make, you gotta make a decision. Maybe yeah. some, maybe a guy that is, feels like a girl and I'm talking in jest here. This is right. me throwing out ideas, but maybe the guy that feels like a girl Maybe his low testosterone at that age is the problem. And he doesn't really know that. And he thinks that, oh, I have these feelings, but he's so hormonally out of whack that he needs to get his hormones in place to, to figure out what the fuck's going on. So maybe we need to start need to going after what the actual problem is instead of just saying, okay, that's how you feel. This is what we're going to do to fix it. Like, let's figure out what the actual issue is. I you know, I think some people should transition because they absolutely fucking have the right to and they actually need to. But I think the people that want to transition because it's a it's it's a fad is what's what doesn't make sense. That's what I'm saying. There's also people out there that just do it for the attention. Yes. And that like that's there's, there's, you have the people that do it because they actually 
have something going on. And that's what they feel they need to do. And then you have people that just do it for the attention. And that that's where everything gets fucked up at. And I think now what happening is people are starting to see that it's becoming more of an attention thing than an actual, these people have serious problems and they need help. And, and this is what they're doing to fix yeah. themselves and better themselves. Now it's being like, you motherfuckers have to accept us because it's like, whoa, like, this is all new to everybody. You can't just segregate yourself into a group this big and then demand that everybody shows all these higher respects and regards and changes their how they talk there and what they go. say. Like, no, 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 no. Step the fuck back and relax, mm. you know? Um, but, but that was just a topic that was really on the forefront of my brain because at the past three days, I have seen it on Instagram over yeah. and over and over. I saw Kid Rock light up a whole entire he he had like four cases of fucking bud light that he put out like facing the uh a lake and he fucking opened his ar and just smoked them and That's fucking it. shot all the fucking beer cans That's it. Okay. um but moving on we did something pretty cool today you sent me we posted something up on our story and we wanted to ask some questions you posted um just questions i posted a little more intimate setting things so yeah. um Let's see. You you sent me your questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up what uh I mean I actually I no I couldn't do it from your story, it wouldn't make sense. So I this is this is this is uh I'm I'm gonna see how hard this really is because uh I, I know um when we were on bro chat there was a lot of like nope not doing not doing pass 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 because uh some of them were so we could see how really ridiculous um some of these questions really are. So let's see. Uh, let's start with Okay. How do you keep your blood pressure in check when in bulking phase? Well, Nick, I never had a blood pressure issue ever. No, I actually, my blood pressure has been pretty good. So. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. People think because like they, you know, they think I'm like a, this is a big hothead that I would be this like crazy maniac, but I don't have my blood pressure. Perfect. Um, is there any gym you both would like to train at someday, but haven't been to yet? I mean, I went to Pure. That was pretty satisfying. I've never been there. You would love it. Yeah. I, knowing you, you would love it. But a gym that I haven't been to. I'm trying to think. Um, like that gym. I know there's like, you know, what is it? Is it like um, Alpha Elite's a gym, right? Isn't there like Zoom been culture? That, that one. Was... Yeah, I've never been to any of those. Um, most of the gyms that I, I've trained at, I would like to go to like back in the day, like Dorian's gym. You know what? Yeah, I would like to go there. Like that would be pretty fucking. What was it called? Uh, the, be... What was uh, the dungeon? Um, what the fuck was the name of it? I can't remember. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to blank. I actually oh. want to go to the the big gym. Uh, fuck, who owns it in uh, Australia? Oh, Tony Doherty's gym. Yes, I would like oh, to go to gym. That. Shout out to Tony Doherty. Been to that gym. Tony, Tony, what I really like about Tony is that when you go there, there's not a lot of guys, okay? Steve Weinberger is one of them, too. Montanari Brothers are one. But there's not a lot of guys that um, really take care of pro bodybuilders the way Tony does. Tony, if you're a pro bodybuilder, Tony makes you feel like you actually are a fucking pro bodybuilder. I, I went out there and I did his show um, back uh, I think it was 2016. Uh, Dallas's last show is when it was the, when when Dallas got really sick and almost passed out on stage. Um, I was there for that show, competing in the open. But Tony puts on one hell of a show every year. Great events. Um, good human being. Um, has has a great heart, and uh, he's always, he's always done right by me. So shout out to Tony. But Doherty's gym, bro, fucking, you would fucking love it. I know, love yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I would, I don't know. There's not really, I'm trying to think of like a gym around, like, like there's not really a gym in the U S that I haven't like gym. Like I want to go to that. I, I've gone to it. Um, yeah. you know, I've been to the, I actually know what oxygen gym. I've never been. Yeah. That's who actually. I've never been Dubai. to oxygen gym. Bader Dubai's been, oxygen gyms. The one in Kuwait, especially is the one. Look incredible. Insane. You would like, you know, the gym that Sergio trains at. Yeah. It's called Binos or Binos. I, I, yeah, um, awesome too. 
I train there when I, every time I go to Dubai, that's the gym I train at. That gym, that gym might be one of the craziest gyms of all time. If you ever mm -hmm. tried a gym, it's awesome. Um, what do we got? TNC Breakers, favorite flavor Pop Tart? Strawberry. Okay, so I'm a berry guy. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's fruit. It doesn't matter what Pop Tart it is. I, 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 can, I can agree with that. Yeah. Like, I don't like the maple sugar. I don't like the cookie dough or the Oreos. Not my, not my fucking thing. There is one I, I like the uh, chocolate chip pop tart though. You do? Yeah, that one's pretty good. I don't think I. Well, what? Which one is it? It's called chocolate chip. No, I never had it. That one's pretty good. You, I did tell you about the ice cream though. That you got to try, right? Yes, you did. Did you tell Maria? No, I don't think I did. Oh, dude, you're missing out. Thick mint. Ben and Jerry's right. thick mint. Yep. We want to see a leg workout with you and guys since he can quote unquote bury you gonna happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and Nick will definitely get some training sessions in. Um, yeah. will the burying of Nick happen? No. My uh my burying, uh well, you know what? I the only place I might catch some of the guys training, I'm gonna say Nick, just like some of the guys I train with now. My it's, it's not so much the intensity, but it's also the speed. I don't train. So I, I, I don't, my rest periods are, I, I train hard, heavy, fast, and I don't have a long rest period. So other than that, but I've seen, if anybody has seen Nick train, one of the most impressive physiques to train and handle some of the most substantial, insane amount of weight with some of the most ridiculous control I've ever seen. So there will be no burying with Nick on leg day. So <laughs> sorry, sorry to tell you guys. Um, any thoughts on moving again? We covered that. Um, Raul Io, do you think that you will win the 2023 Olympia and why? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think I have a shot at winning any show I do, but for the Olympia, yeah. I mean, the two people that were in front of me were Hadi and Derek. Um, and I think they are, you know, very comparable. I think that's why they were one and two. Um I listen, I love Hottie, but I don't see him repeating, in my opinion. And Derek, you know, he could continue to beat me now that he has a full off season, actually, to put the work in and put, you know, size on now. So we'll see. But everyone knows I improved drastically, show to show. So it's it's just gonna really come down to what me and him look like, who's been better shape, honestly. Now I remember um you said on on a podcast just months ago that you actually said out of everybody, and I remember I stopped. I was like, I've never heard you say that. Yeah, you, said, you, yeah you you yeah. actually said you Derek could beat me if he's on, and I, I remember being like, oh, I've never heard you say that. So it goes people don't understand like Derek's not small by any oh. means. Like he's a big guy, and he's got great shape, right? You know, so what I was trying to do even for the Olympia, for the Arnold, was in, improve the shape. That's what I was trying to do. And I think it worked in my favor for the Olympia because I was still very, very full. But I think, you know, when I came into the Arnold, I wasn't as full, a lot more conditioned, and the waist was definitely more streamlined. But I just didn't have the pop that everyone likes, I guess. Um, so the goal for me into this Olympia is to have the Olympia fullness to match the Arnold condition. And I, if I can do that, I, I, I think I went hands down. You, something that, that you did that is okay. Cause I've done it. We've all done it. We've all done it at some point in our career. You try to play somebody game. else's game. Yeah. And it's called, you, you could use two words for it. Chris Aceto said this to me, probably doesn't remember he said it to me a while ago, years ago. He said, we're on the same page, but now we got to get on the same line. Meaning yeah. you stay on the line, stay on the page you're at. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Like Nick Walker brings to, the, brings to the table what exactly your nickname stands for, the mutant. You bring that fucking wow factor 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be lights out, game over, you're winning that show. 
So you just continue to do what you've been doing. It's just finding the perfect balance, right? Yes. It's so. a juggling act. It's hard. It's hard. That's what makes bodybuilding so awesome and so frustrating because and it's I, literally yeah. had to figure out that balancing act to be the best of both worlds. And it's not and easy think, to do. I think my best look would be just a little less conditioned with the more fullness. Yeah. It's the, you just got to balance it. Yeah. Cause people think, well, when you say, I want to be, I want to be that same conditioned and fuller. Well, if you're, if you're fuller, your, your condition is not going to be at, it's going to be a little, little less if you're that much fuller, you know, people don't understand. People think, well, I want the same conditioning and fuller. Well, if you're 10 pounds heavier, the conditioning is, is can't be as crisp as you were flat. Cause it's just, it, it's impossible. Right. So you, you yeah. got to sacrifice somewhere. Right. Um, Uh, movements you hate but are highly beneficial to growth. Ah, uh, uh, see, it's hard. You're talking now or then? Like yeah. I hate, I hated doing uh, uh what the fuck was it? Um, deadlifts from the floor, and I but I but then I started getting a bad back. But I think they're very beneficial. But they also do you, see. I I don't. I do. I think that I think deadlifts do have a fucking place. I really do. I think I, what's more beneficial than a deadlift, in my opinion, is RDLs. Okay, now hear me out, though. I agree. In a timestamp, meaning that I agree would be the case for somebody that has already been seasoned and in the and been doing this for a while. But I also think that as a bodybuilder, somebody that works out, your foundation should be built with just the core fucking like no, I, I exercise. Agree. And I do believe that deadlift is one of the ones that you need to do I to agree. really have a good back and good foundation of, of your, but that's my opinion, right? It's not, no, it's not I, fact. I agree. You know what I think is the most underrated back exercise? Underrated? Hypers? Pull-ups. Oh, I love pull-ups. I think, in my opinion, pull-ups can build one of the best backs in the world. John Meadows got me doing pull-ups, and I actually do them all the time now. And I, I do you do them with a band? No, I actually do a, like on an assisted machine. Okay, yeah, same thing. So, do you pull when you? So, when you pull it, are you pulling to try to like when John would have us use the band? It was it would be be to pull past the top part and really squeeze the bottom yeah. of your lats yeah. so that's kind of how i'm used to doing them now when i, do, I do it that way yeah yep. yeah uh, pull-ups are phenomenal you know what's crazy too pull-ups are phenomenal and for chest doing push-ups stacked up on like high um 45s like rubber plates and just stretching they're called like stretch push-ups i love phenomenal. i love ending my chest workouts super setting dips and uh, push-ups it's it's simple things that people oh just forget about you forget get, about this oh oh especially if you do the pulps the right way or the push ups the right way your chest will be fucking rocked exactly yes you can push ups can make your chest grow and I think people undermine them quite a bit jailhouse workouts bro pull up pull ups and push ups yep. how to go pro I can't even figure it. a training what is that? Free, I don't know training frequency I do I I'm I'm training five days a week. I got Thursday and Sunday off. Well, are they, are they talking about like body parts? Or? They just said training frequency question mark. They, that, if you ask it broad, I'm answering it broad. Because <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I can't dissect I can't what you're asking. What is we? <laughs> Leg day with guy who pukes first. You were a guy. I don't train hard anymore, so it'll probably be me. See, you got to probably check that story, son. <laughs> You better check my story, son. <laughs> uh, any interest in going hunting with Guy? That's a good fucking question. I, I, I would. 100%. Would you really? Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Okay. Would you be able to pull the trigger on an animal? Yeah. Yeah, you think so? Without a doubt. Oh, I have friends that literally could go, I do, like, I could never, I could never kill I, them. Yeah, I will. 100%. Okay. Okay. Um, that would be fucking it. I could, I could, 
First that's of all, a YouTube you, video. You yeah, you wouldn't you would there's no way I'd, I would allow you to climb a tree like with even with like no, 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 you'd have yeah. to be in like a ladder stand, which is like you just almost like uh like it's almost you it's almost like you walk up like um a ladder and then there's like a big platform. It's no no that's yeah, why I I'll do that. I ain't climbing no trees. Um no, you I would I would fucking have a heart attack watching you climb a tree. <laughs> uh Nick. Any tips for teens who want to pursue a career in bodybuilding? They're asking you specifically. Ooh, um, take your time. Have patience. Hire a good coach. And don't listen to the outside noise. Yeah. Bang on. I'm going to answer this one. You might not want me to, but I'm going to, because this is for, what? this is directed at you, but I'm going to answer it for you because we talked about this. What is it? Somebody says, are you actually going to interact and have a conversation on this one? Because the last one with four of us, I guess you, uh -oh. it, you didn't talk as much as you do one-on-one -on -one. and me and you talked about this, but I, I'm, hold on. I actually brought this up to Nick. Okay. We had the last conversation. I go, man, I said, you know what I noticed about you? I said, one thing that makes our podcast so good when we do mine and Nick's together, like my, me and you, when we, I was talking on the phone, I said, is the fact that when it's just me and you, you're a different person. Yeah. And that's a good thing because when it's just me and you, it's more intimate. There's not a lot of background noise. You're not trying to look for a way to fucking slide in and say something. So and and we're boys and we've been around the block and we've had we've done a lot of things together and we've had a lot of ups and downs as far as just like life so that's why it's different when it, you're with me but if you want to say something go right ahead but i i was just saying I think that when there's more people i i get prone into listening rather than talking because we like we don't I, we don't have guests i guess so it's like I, I I listen to a lot of things Seth was saying. I was listening to a lot of things that Nick is saying, and I think I get sidetracked, and yeah. I just don't talk. <laughs> yeah, which is okay. Yeah. Like I'm more of a talker, but I can also, you know, like I, when I, we were on Bro Chat, you know, when it was like me, you, Fuad, and somebody, I would talk a lot. Yeah, well, you talked a lot when it was when when it was when Bro Chat was originally three of us. Three, yeah. You talked a lot more because it was just three. But then when you had yeah. like four and five in, that's when you kind of... I just think, I, I don't know. I think four is a perfect number, but I think when you have more, it just becomes overwhelming. Yeah, because you yeah. don't want to like... Not everybody's like me and is an asshole and just will interrupt, which I'm yeah, trying I'm to... Yeah, I'm not... I'm just going to listen. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just... And don't and listen. I know I interrupt, and people were getting aggravated on on one of the podcasts, and, and I do try to not do it. But, no, I, yeah, you know, um, we did that. Wait, what? Oh, we already did this. Uh, okay, actually, no. Any inch hunting? Oh. Favorite movement for massive traps? I, I mean, shrug. Drugs. I don't know. Dream is to be like you, Nick. Hey, thanks. Uh, I want to wear tight to the gym, but I'm afraid of shit stains and have a little wank. <laughs> Any advice? <laughs> wear baggy pants. Wear black. Wear black. Wear black. Wear black. Because <laughs> black won't be tight. The black tights won't be tight on them at all. Well, it'll, it'll hide if you have a little schmackle. Well, I doesn't do, don't they say that like wearing black makes you look like ten like you lost ten pounds? So wouldn't his dick look smaller? Or does it make like a gain? Well, if he's got big legs, you're not gonna have a bulge anyway. No, you you have you have you been one to the gym to just like wear span? Like I used to bust Dallas's balls yeah, bro. all the just... time. Which and that's it. Yep. Still. No, I don't wear them anymore. But back uh, years ago, I did. When you, but when you were big, yeah, bro. How could you walk out of your house with the fucking size you are, knowing that you could pretty much see the outline of every fucking thing in your balls and butt? Oh, you could definitely see the outline of my dick. So, I, but that like how you did knew. that? 
you if I was standing still, you could point to where like my head was. So that's what I'm saying. Like, how does that not did that like I'm I don't like attention doesn't bother me, but I don't look for it. That would give me fucking anxiety times a million. Like didn't bo- like that didn't bother you. <laughs> Dude, like free willy, bro. I'm good. <laughs> I'm here to get a pump, baby. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You better hope that thing don't get pumped. Then you're gonna be. Yeah, right. <laughs> if that thing gets pumped in the gym, you fucking you'd be in trouble. Yeah, it sure would. Um, what do you what do? Oh, uh, what do you think about the T three use on prep? He he where he screwed up a couple uh, words. Uh, needed if necessary. Yeah, it's not a drug, and that's and. Believe that's not a drug you should play with because no, that's that you are gonna, can... like it's like the end of a prep to like maybe if you hit a stall point, you just kind of little little dose and it'll go a long way. That's one of those ones that could really mess your hormones up if it's not done the right way. Came you know, you got to start it and taper it, come on off. It's not, I don't, I don't like to, to fuck with T3 that much. I mean, I, I know uh, it, it's a it's a staple in a lot of guys' diets, but. Um, I feel like if guys died it a little harder, sometimes it wouldn't need the abundance of T3. I um, agree. Any experience using peptides? If so, what peptides? Um, no, not really. Yeah, I've tried a few, and I haven't seen shit. BPC and TB, I've done a few times. I've never used. I've never used. Yeah. Um, the guys, uh, so, so those are the only two that I really saw anything from. And I'll say this, the, the, the company that I ordered from um, was Amino Asylum. They actually, uh, yeah, uh, yeah they, they actually had their, their peptide place, and I'm not sponsored by them. This was completely, um, you know, not, not coached. But uh, they sent me, uh, I ordered BPC and TB. They sent it to me, and uh, that actually was the only peptide I can actually say that I've ever used those two that actually did something for me. I use their what is it the the liquid Cialis they have? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I use that because you know after a show, you know your your PP is a yeah. rock. Yeah, really it made me rock hard. Get the fuck out of here! I the, li- the liquid one too. Huh? A lot of people too would be skeptical about taking liquid things, so they think the liquid oh, is like underdosing shit. Well, it's funny. Everyone was messaging me. It was like, "Are you using that for blood pressure?" I'm like, "No, for my dick." <laughs> Real, really? Yeah. Oh, I guess because it's got like it, it does have that that effect. I mean, that's originally what it was used for, but yeah. that's that's hilarious. No, work uh-huh. the desktop bodybuilding. That's Derek, right? More play. No. That's no, that's not more play. Who's it's desktop like, bodybuilding? Oh fuck! I feel like I feel Who horrible. I mean, I, uh, will both of you come on my channel together for a one-off? I don't know what that means. One off, meaning like it's not something we do, it's not something he does, but he would be willing to do it for us. But what's one off? One off, meaning like a, a one time thing, not like an all the time thing. Like he wants us to do it once and oh. like, like on his channel, he doesn't want us to do like an every week podcast. Oh, yeah, we could work something out. Message me and Nick. What? <laughs> I'll let you answer. For someone who believes in freedom of speech, why does a guy bitch about everything so much? I don't do I bitch. Well, he bitches about everything because he's got freedom of speech. <laughs> Touche, vegan natty cross figure. Motherfucker. Wow. He put the three things in it like everybody hates. What? Vegans, natties, and crossfitters. That's his name. <laughs> That's what he says. Wow. Um, how do you mitigate the bad skin with the use of PEDs? Um, I'll start quick. That, and ne- I never had any. So I had uh, bad acne when I like first started. But I don't know if that was typically the, the what I was using as as term as like the, the name brand. Yeah. Because um, over the years, you know, you, you try different shit. You use different, you know. And what I use you know, throughout my uh, past four or five years, I don't really have breakouts. Yeah. So, I mean, I get the occasional, like, ah, shit, I got a pump, you know? But, like, I don't... It's nothing to what it was when I was younger, by any means. 
Yeah, I never, I mean, there was very few times I've ever gotten any breakouts or any, or any zits. I, I mean, I've had it, friends that, that I also horrible. think it's, it's genetic. Like, if yeah, 100%. you're just prone to breaking out, all that's, you're just enhancing it at that point. And I tell people too, a good way to to fucking get b- bad skin is take like dirty on un- you take dirty underground shit. You don't know where it comes from. It's not that's what I'm in- saying. Take, it's you, you know it, that'll that'll ki- that'll kill your skin. Yeah. Worst part of prep, best part of prep. Worst part of prep for me is the beginning, getting started into the group. I hated it. The first week was miserable for me. I think I Mentally, I think the worst for me is like the final two weeks because it's like it's right there, but yet still so far. Yeah. And each day kind of just gets slower and slower. <laughs> yeah, I, I can attest to you because you could tell when you were getting close to the show, it was kind of like, all right, I've had enough now. Like, like when is this going to be fucking done with? Yeah. Um, but best I also part. agree. I also agree with getting started. Is the hard part, especially if you've been out of prep for a long time. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, now yeah. If you were like a quick little oh break, it's easy to get back into it, you yeah. know. But yeah. when you have like a year off or you took two whatever, you're just like, oh shit, like I gotta be, I gotta get in the zone now. Prepping for the O uh, once a year would be exactly kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. So the best part of prep for me, however, is like six weeks out. For some reason, like six, six to five weeks out from a show. I was always at my all-time strongest. I was strong as a motherfucker. Really? Right? Always. I was. I would always break PRs around that time. Always. I'd, I'd say it was. It was my favorite. Was six to eight weeks. Why and why so? I just felt like that's when I was like not peeled, but I was lean and just full as a fucking house all the time and strong. Yeah. And then once you get to like you know the final four, it's like uh. Yeah, five, six for me, I was strong. But, like, the last two, I was like you. I was like, all right, like, I'm I'm exhausted now. This is yep. How many days can ab, Can you do abs? I do them three times a week. In, in prep, I, I will do them every day pretty much. Okay. And then off-season, I'll rotate, like, every other day. Like, yeah. one day I'll do, like, some glute work and calves. And then the next will be abs, and then just keep going that way. That's smart. So you alternate doing some glute work too. Uh, Listen, I I think glute is very important now. So even in the off season, whether I'm just doing like a machine kickback or a glute rear or something, yeah, I always try to hit it. Okay. So hit it and quit it. Hit and quit it. Favorite AAS compound and why? Um, I'm gonna say real, real, primo, or real sus. People are gonna be like, obviously real guy. We get it. Okay. So, yeah. Right. No shit. But um, I don't want to because if I said primo, people be like, well, primos are a lot of primos. A lot of primos fake. I think you know my favorite is by MPP. See, I never really used. MVP. I would get I get strong as fuck on that thing and it shows immediately. How is it with like joints? Because I know like people utilize DECA for like joint health and stuff like that. Like how's MPP? Like, did you see any like joint like did it make your well, joints I, any better? I'm, I'm pretty good with my joints, so knock on wood. Yeah. But it I think it helps. I do. I think. I've debated like at some point. I was like, maybe I'll throw something into the cycle. But dude, I, I, I'm. If you do, if you decide, just please, just, just try MPP for me. Really? Just try. You like it like that, huh? Hmm. Because it's it's the fast acting version of Decker. So for one, it's in yes. and out of your system if you don't like it. It's yep. whatever. I'm I'm actually a big fan of the fast acting things over slow acting. Yeah. I just like it better. It works. If you don't like it, you get yeah, it out yeah. of your system. Done. But I I think that is. Hmm. What about pro, the um? Well, you're younger than me. Do you ever like the last time I I remember about a couple months ago I added Deca in, 
And I added in a hundred MIGs twice a week. I was doing 200 MIGs. I just literally was trying to do it to get my, get a little joint relief. Yeah. And it fucking, I've never had, it sent my prostate for a fucking whirlwind. Really? Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. And I, I like, I, yeah, I, 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 and I went to my doctor and I was like, is this? And he goes, that's your prostate. But, you know, we looked at my blood work. My prostate is, is completely fine. But that adding that in just okay. made it go out. Yeah. I'll never add, I'll never add regular deck. And so that's what I'm wondering if MPP. I have side a, effects. take a deck in forever. So yeah. I don't. Last time I took Deca, I, I was like 20. Deca is like that, like, like Aldactone. It's like one of those drugs that like, you, you're not going to hear that much anymore that like nobody really fucking ever takes. No, 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 no. Um, we'll, we'll bang on a couple more here because it's already, we, 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 we did good. People don't realize that it's, uh, you're three hours behind. It's 1148 at night here. Well, no, the, well, you know what I think is that awesome drug too is Masteron. Yes, a uh, hundred. So if it wasn't, I wanted to say it. I wanted to say my favorite test. But if Primo didn't come out in my mouth, Masteron would have been it. I yeah. think you can utilize Masteron in an off season or in prep, hundred percent, and it's safer. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I know, which is crazy. The last like five years of my career. I saw the abundance of people starting to incorporate the use of Masteron into their off-season um, yeah. programs, which, which is funny. I think it's uh, smart. That you said that. Um, answer that, answer that. Okay. Answer that. Do you cold plunge at all? I don't. Okay, I have, and I definitely noticed benefits. Uh, you definitely... I want to. They have it at Pure, so when I go back, I'm going to use it. Well, I know um, the uh, the guy we were talking about, Lewis, uh, I believe that the medical sauna place, they do a lot of different things like chairs, and they have like... Uh, yeah. And, I, and according to him, he said that they were going to be releasing this year a, a cold plunge as well, so that might be a, a, an a added benefit that, for your house. Yeah, I agree. Um, how do you, how are you doing with the loss? No, I'm not going to bring it up. Um, someone was asking about Thor. Oh, uh, yeah. not good. Yeah. Shout out to your boy, Joe, though. for the cool Oh day. yeah, Joe. I didn't even know he did that. I'm like, Joe, you didn't even tell me you were doing something like that, bro. I said, yeah, that was really nice. That was awesome. Um, Joe, that's, uh, if you want to know why Joe is one of my closest friends, it's shit like that. Something Very little like that is motherfucker right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we answered that cheat meals and about legs. Uh, are you are you anytime coming to Mexico? You motivate me. Uh, you're a great bodybuilder. You have any plans to go to Mexico? Nope. Uh, that's gonna be answered. Okay, no, that's done. Here, here, this, this is good. Yeah, make it a good one. This is two. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll answer these two. Okay. Um, how do you get, how, how do you, we're, we're going to do a serious one and then we're going to do a bodybuilding one. Which one do you want okay. first, a serious or bodybuilding? Serious. How do you get over a relationship? Ooh. Um, listen, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I think everyone's different. I think the best thing for someone to do is to surround themselves with their family, their friends, but also set a nice quiet time for yourself and do something that occupies your mind that you enjoy doing, whether it's playing basketball, going to the gym, whatever that is, and delete everything that you have of that girl so or guy, whatever, so you're not forced to look at it yeah block her on social media even though it sounds childish if that's your way of coping and getting over certain things then do it yeah. and then when you are ready if you want to unblock her that's on you i've done that myself delete block her from your phone don't let her you don't want to hear from her any pictures gone get rid of it you know etc you, you know what i mean that's i think that's how i do it yeah 
you know, just because think about it, if you're on Instagram, so that's what I'm saying. So social media is a, a buzzkill. If you're on social media and you're, you're, fine. you're even if you're not following each other anymore, you're you're gonna type her name in, of right? Of course. You're, you're gonna you're gonna check in. And then so happens, you know, you've been broken up for two weeks or whatever, and you see her out partying. Like it's gonna bother you. Yeah. You know, you see she's, you know, taking a picture with a guy who may not mean anything. You don't know him, but it means nothing to her, but to you, it's going to be like, what the fuck, you know? And your head starts to fucking go in a million directions. So, I, so that's why I say just block her, avoid everything. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I there's no no argument with the, me there. The one thing I can say that I think people do now in this age more than they did before is a lot of people, whether, whether or not they want it to end or it ends, they seem to, you know, people... Re replacing uh, a significant other has never been easier. And I mean no. that in, in the sense that, you know, the, the access to social media makes things so easy. Oh yeah. I could, we could break up with our chick and then two days later, we're talking to someone on social hey. media, meeting up, done. So yeah. my, my, my best advice I can give to somebody for a breakup is in order. Make sure it's done. Well, that, that obviously, but <laughs> You, you you need to take a gap because I, I used to, I, I wasn't the best at doing this. So I'm giving advice that I didn't follow um, um, yeah. until later on in my life is you, you can't go from one right to another because that, no, you that, need a break. You leave a vapor trail of bad shit and past that is, is always going to come back to bite you if you don't allow the dust to settle and to I, breathe yeah. a little bit and yeah. to get over your your feelings in your head and then move on. So I think the the number one I think I could say is get like allow yourself the time. And if you want to cry, cry. If you want to be mad, be mad. If you want to do, you know, go out with your buddies and, and get hammered one night and, and drink your sorrows away, or you know, you want to sit in the house and smoke weed with your friends and fucking laugh your balls off so you're not thinking about it. Like you, you do that, but also spend the time by yourself and, and reflect and, and, and understand that this shit like that happens. And it's not out of the norm for somebody to have a breakup. It's okay. You I know? agree with you. And well, like my dad used to say, there's a lot of fish in that. In the sea. Wow. I and agree. The last one, which this one was good. It was. Why? Why? Why did Nick Walker start bodybuilding? Well, this stems Why? back to the, the childhood, right? Um, listen, I started as, you know, because I, I told you I was molested as a child. Yeah. You, you know, so I used weight training as the scapegoat, you know, to ease everything instead of, you know, causing trouble in the world, which I could have easily done. But I, I chose to try and be smart about it and use weightlifting as a way to ease the pain, ease, ease the stress away, which worked. Um, you know, and within all that, you know, obviously I grew up at a, a pretty drastic rate. So everyone was like, you should try competing. Um, and at the time, you know, I'm like, I don't want to wear a fucking dong on stage. You know, I think that's everyone's first impression, right? And then, you know, I gave it, I gave it a whirl. Um, you know, my first prep was, you know, absolutely the most worst, shittiest prep I could have ever done in my life. <laughs> I, I'm surprised I even wanted to continue. Um, but the, I think what made me come back was like the thrill of, of being on stage. And even though I looked like dog shit, it was you, to, to hear everyone clapping, cheering. It, I, I never felt like accomplished of anything in my life you know since Top that happens too yeah even when i graduated high school like i just didn't feel yeah because like i let all that shit carry over throughout my entire high school the high school was a drag um so that was the first time i was like wow like this is cool so then you know i, I had to go back to the drawing board and i'm like you know i i need to look you know that, that, that was horrible you yeah. know so then I really just started to take it really serious. And, you know, I just kept going and kept going. And every decision I've made was to be better for myself, you know? And that's why, like, even now, being in the limelight, it's it's really hard to make decisions 
because you know nine times out of ten when you make a decision you're going to hurt somebody in the process you're judged I, too you're judged. you're judged and it's and it's like you need to to make every decision that you think is best for you yes you know and that's that's the one thing about social media that sucks is because i could make a decision that nobody in the world agrees with and now I'm getting backlash. I lose integrity. I lose this. I lose whatever. And it's like, listen, this is what I think is best for me. Yeah. And my, you know, whatever is happening in my life. And not 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 to be a dick, but it's like I don't owe you guys an explanation. Yeah. You know, this is this is my life, and I'm gonna make choices on what I think is gonna be best for me. Now, have I made emotional decisions in the past that I regret? Not necessarily regret, but probably wish I didn't do or thought about more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that, you know, I have Maria here, I'm able to put my emotions aside yeah, and really think about, you know, decisions, pros to, to things, cons to things. And still, whether I think one decision has more pros and cons, whatever I think has more pros, I still may get judged for a thousand percent for it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, weighing out pros and cons, I'm going to go with the pros that, ha that have the most pros and that I think will benefit my future. And that's just what my entire life has been about. And it's done you pretty damn good, I think. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, what when you, you know, obviously the reason for um, you getting into bodybuilding, but how did you start? Like, what, what was the starting point? Like, was there a person like a, a person that you saw was there a gym you saw like was there a weight set like what yeah what uh, so what, what got you like obviously there was there was a a incident that happened that made you go i want to do this but where was like the first interaction to where you were like i fucking love this this is i love working out like this is awesome as as corny as it's gonna sound as i saw my first video of jay cutler oh, really on youtube yeah Really? Just came it across was, it out of the blue? Well, it was on YouTube. I typed it in bodybuilders, you know, whatever. You're, you're like 12 years old, whatever. You know, yeah. And, yeah. Like, you know, and I, and I saw, you know, Arnold. I saw, you know, uh, Ronnie. I saw, but Jay just stood the most out to me. Yeah. And it was there was a certain video that I thought, like, meshed with my life the best. It was It was a video that was four minutes long. And I remember he was wearing a, a red Under Armour cutoff and the song playing in the background was called Wasted Years by a band called Cold. And I, I heard that song and it, and because I was such a fan of his, having that in both one video, it was, it was, it was like, this is what I want to do with my life. That's awesome. Like, and I still listen to that song to this day. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I guess we got to have uh, we got to have Jay Cutler on here, huh? We we should try. Yeah, for I mean, sure. Jay Jay, somebody. It's it's crazy. Seth. Well, it's even the. I don't want to cut you off, but even going back, it, you it's can. Cool you to, can. Even my mom said it. It's cool to like that. I was a fan of Jay Cutler, and now I'm like friends with Jay. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, it's so. My buddy asked me that same question. He goes, the other, literally this past week, this weekend, he goes, is it weird for you? I go, what do you mean? He goes, it's got to be a little weird being friends with some of these guys because, like, you weren't friends. And I go, hey, you know what? I When I stop and think about it, I go, cool, Jay, Jay calls me every day. And if he doesn't call me, he's texting me. And I don't really step back and think, oh, it's Jay Cutler because my 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 yeah. relationship went – Jay went from me being a fan to oh, now yeah. us being friends. So like my, I know who he is. I, and I think it comes to more of the forefront when we're out in public, when people are always stopping him constantly. And then like, you go, like, Oh shit. Like it's Jay. Shit. Yes. Um, well, it's like, even with you, the more I got into it, I became your fan. Yeah. Cause I, I watched a lot of your videos on YouTube and it, yeah, even though you weren't that big, you, you had <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to throw it in. I was, I knew yeah. it was going to come. I just didn't know but what was, point it was coming. And, and I think what most people, I would say, are a big fan of yours is the attitude. Yeah. Most people love that intensity. Yeah. They love that I don't give a fuck attitude. And since you were from Jersey, I was like, oh, that's that's fucking awesome. Yeah. You know. So yeah. it was. That's. 
I had a, I, I looked up to very certain individuals for certain reasons. Yeah. You know, I think Jay was more like the overall, right? Yeah. I looked up to you because of the attitude and I don't give a fuck about nothing, which it's like a, it's like a good and bad thing, right? hundred uh, like, percent. I know that. It's good because nothing bothers you, but it's bad because like for, for let's say relationship wise, yeah. no girls really good. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, you don't give a fuck. All right. Peace. You know, <laughs> but it's, if I, I think there's more pros to it than cons, if I'll be yeah. honest. Listen, I, you know, there's, there's been a lot of stuff um, and, and uh, going on lately. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details, but you know, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of changing going on in my life and a lot of things that are happening. And, you know, it's hard. It, it is, it is hard being somebody who's, 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 who's in the eye of a lot of people. It's, it's hard being friends with a lot of people. And, and one thing that I, I've, I've spoke a lot about the past couple of weeks is, is listen, I, I can't, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm as loyal as they come. People can sit here and, and see what things that were, you know, that, that I've done on, on a podcast or, you know, you know, things that, that, that I do or what I've said or, or people that I'm friends with. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm only one person, you know, and, and I have to treat every single person as an individual and I can't allow somebody else's actions to affect me if it's not directed towards me. There's a lot of people in this world and a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I know don't get along with other people that I'm friends with um, because of whatever their reasons are. And at the end of the day, that doesn't affect me. Um, okay. and, and, and I have to go through my I have to go through my life um, respecting each person as an individual. And it, it's hard to um, and it's hard to do it because when for me, a lot of things don't bother me. So like videos that are posted, maybe if they're about me, don't bother me. And comments that people say about me, whether it's on Mutant in the Mouth, whether it was on Bro Chat, whether it's on my Instagram, they they don't bother me. So uh, my my downfall is I assume that other people don't give that much of a shit either and have that thick of a skin that I do. And in in all actuality, that's not true is that there's a very few people that have the attitude that I have that can go through life and say, you know, I don't really give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me. As long as, as long as my, my family's taken care of and, you know, my faith is there, I'm like everything. Like I know who I am and, and I'm going to die knowing who I am and, and who, who I've been, you know, who I did right to. And I, the attitude I have is more so a, this is who I am you can accept me for who I am or you can dislike me for who I am because I don't have time in my life to make people want to like me. Right. And that's just how I live my life. It's like, this is what you get. I'm not going to change. This is what I believe. And what my beliefs is the reason why I act the way I act. And you can either like me, hate me, or you can respect me. And those are the three things that I give people. And I don't really care which one you choose. If you choose to respect me, I will give you respect back. If you choose to be my friend, I will be the one of the best friends to you I could be. If you choose to not like me, you'll never talk to me again. It's that simple. I, but I always say, I was like, you don't have to like me, but you have to respect me. Yeah. And I, and that's probably, you know, that that probably one of the most truthful things that can be said. And I have said multiple times in interviews something very similar. And we, we, can, we can even end on this. I have said, when I die, people don't have to say they liked me. Oh. But if they can look at the big picture and go, you know what? I wasn't a big fan of him, but at least he was fucking honest and he spoke his fucking mind and he spoke his truth. That's all I give a fuck about. Really it. Because if you're true to who you are, then to me, you lived your life. I and agree. That, that's it. So we'll end on that note. We've been on a lot longer than I even thought because I thought it would be two hours. I think, but yeah, two hours into over two hours. So um, that was a fucking great episode. We actually dug deep into a lot of uh, deep shit. So I, I'm, I actually like this a lot. And I like these one on one. And I'm glad we did this uh, again because we did, you know, two back to back where we weren't, uh, me and you. And I think people started to see, wow, Nick, Nick and Guy have something when it's just Nick and Guy. And I, I, duo, baby. Yeah. 
And I'm glad and I'm glad we did the back to back with Nick and then Nick and Seth because I think it got people to realize how our dynamic is when it's just us two. So um, mm-hmm. you know, listen, we appreciate everybody with the comments and the and uh, the, the the love we've been getting from doing our mutant in the mouth and having the episode with Nick and uh, Seth, and we're gonna see where that takes us. But we really enjoy each and every one of you guys, and, and this is something that me and Nick actually look look forward to uh, doing every week for you guys and, and something right. that we are going to continue to do and grow and, and the places we want to take our podcast um, are probably the same place that everybody else wants to take. We, we want to take our podcast. We want to have fun with it. We want to, you know, maybe even take it and do some things on the road and, and podcast together you know, in person. So we had a lot of big things coming that you guys are going to like. So until next time, This is myself and Nick Walker, Mutant and the Mouth. We are signing off. Love you guys. We're out of here. Assalamu alaikum.